Hello everyone, we are starting apparently in about 38 seconds according to the timer. You might have to give me an extra 10 or 20 seconds here, but uh, just let me know in the chat if you're hearing my audio okay. Um, I will be bringing in the, get the, the guests, our very, very special guest audio in a moment. So uh, just let me know if you hear me. All right, uh, hello, I'm live, look, I'm gonna <laughs> blow the train whistle, which means we're really starting today's live stream. Um, hello, uh, I'm Dan, welcome to The Coding Train on a very special uh, Saturday morning, uh, interesting time to live stream. I hope you're having a nice weekend wherever you are in the world, um, and thank you so much for tuning in. Just in case it's a beautiful day outside wherever you are and you feel like, you know, playing some Frisbee, going for a walk. This will all be archived. You can watch it all back later. Uh, I'll be reviewing any of the comments on YouTube after this gets archived and answering your questions. Um, so, but please stay with us. Um, very excited that you're all here. So I'm just kind of vamping here for a minute to make sure uh, all the, everything is going well. I'm seeing a little flickering on my monitor, which is a little disconcerting, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, so first, just a, a couple housekeeping items here. Um, I have a, a kind of entirely new tech setup for this stream <laughs> because I have a guest, which I will introduce in a moment, who is going to do a presentation and write some code and really take over uh, for quite a, a, a bit of time during this stream. So please uh, bear with me if anything should go awry. I know that that's not going to—that's not a strange thing to happen on a coding train live stream. Um, if you happen to have come here for, you know, I don't know why I'm like. Burying the lead here, but if you are a uh, if you came here because you heard about this stream from Dr. Christian Hubicki, um, who is the guest today, let me just first briefly introduce myself. My name is Dan. I uh, teach programming and I have so for almost 20 years in various capacities at schools and workshops and online now uh, uh, quite often on YouTube. I use a particular piece of software called P5JS, which I will come back to later in the stream. And so if today is one of the first days watching the coding train and you've never coded before, um, I do have a whole intro set of uh, tutorials that you might want to check out. You can just go to the Coding Train homepage and find the Start Learning Here playlist. So anyway, I, I, I'm not here to promote myself. <laughs> that's, a, that's not what I meant to do. I just wanted to sort of set the table for anybody who might be totally new. Uh, let us know, by the way, I see people already in the chat saying, I'm in Poland, it's evening, it's 1 a.m. Sunday morning here. So I always love to hear where people are watching from. For, so feel free to drop your location and time zone into the chat. But let me, uh, and Christian, you're still there. I can hear you in my ear. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Let me. Let me. Let me get. Just jump right in. I have a bad habit on my live streams of going on and on for incredibly long periods of time without actually getting to the code. And I do not want to do this today because this is a really unique and super special opportunity to bring in a real life uh, robot scientist, if that's an appropriate term to use. Um, I, you, if you've watched the coding train before, you might know that I have a somewhat of a pathological fear of uh, hardware, <laughs> and I'm not so great with soldering and programming microcontrollers and sensors and motors. And I always want to do more with that. And I hope maybe maybe 2022 into 2023 will be the year for that. This, I hope, is a little bit of a stepping stone for me to be able to bring a guest who has real expertise in working with real life moving around physical robots. Um, I first learned about, uh, uh, I first discovered Christian by watching the television show Survivor, American uh, reality game show, uh, where he actually, uh, it, I, I, I was like, I couldn't believe that the, a title of an episode of an American reality show was called Breath First Search, and that is all because of the amazing uh, Dr. Christian Hubicki. So I'm gonna, he, he's got a bit of a presentation to introduce himself a bit more. Um, we've been in touch a little bit. Um, uh, uh, um, 
Christian helped me, or we had some back and forth on Twitter about the Monty Hall coding challenge that I released, um, where we discussed that a little bit. He did a live stream on Twitch, um, coding the Monty Hall problem in Python. And I thought, ah, we've got to have Christian here on the coding train. Today, everybody's always asking for Python, so we could do a little Python. I have all these videos about nature of code simulation, simulating the movement of natural systems, and often very much sort of just trying to create the feeling of those systems, not necessarily always reproducing the exact or uh, biological mechanics of those systems through code. And so what I think, and I, hopefully this will lead to many more videos and coding challenges and things that I do in my own work, um, to look at what does it mean to write algorithms to, to control the motion of robots? How does that relate to the contr controlling the motion of animated things in generative art systems, and where can we go from there? So there, there's too much to say about all of that. So that's my quick introduction. I'm going to uh, press some buttons. Hopefully everything is gonna work. You know, if we have to take a five minute break for me to fix audio things, I apologize in advance. Um, but I'm gonna turn it over. Let's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna attempt this first button, which will now put both me and uh, here he is, uh, the, the uh, famous in my world, uh, Dr. Christian Uvicki. Uh, thanks so much for being on the coding train. It's a real thrill to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Daniel. It's, it's great to get to be here. Uh, you know, I, I, what sort of opportunity to do some robot coding uh, in a in a big public setting, you know, I I couldn't resist. This this is this is too much fun. So I'm glad to be here, and I look forward to this adventure together. This is going to be going to be a fun a fun ride, I would say. So awesome. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that uh, I want to just see in the chat. Everybody heard Christian? Okay, the audio, the video is going through. Um, please let me know. I'm kind of assuming it's fine because I can see all yeah. of the dials and buttons going. Uh, so now I'm going to switch yep. over and let um, give Christian the full screen and let you take it away. And I will be keeping an eye on the chat and I'll interrupt with any questions or things that come up. Yeah, no, it's a, this is this this is gonna be a good time. So, hey, everyone, thank you so much for letting me be here today with you. Uh, I'm Christian Hubicki. I'm a robotics professor. Uh, I have a PhD in robotics and mechanical engineering, and I specialize in robot control. So, I have just a little presentation for you all today. Um, so, this this is kind of me during my graduate school and undergrad days. You know, I, I I like putting robots together, but especially I love coding robot algorithms and. And, for, and in my world, when I'm talking about robot, when I talk about robots, I, I normally break it down into three categories of things that you care about with robots, right? One is that you have sensors that can sense what's going on in the world. Uh, you have actuators that can somehow affect the world. And in the middle is this cool thing called control or a controller. And so my specific subspecialty of controllers that I work with are for robots that walk on two legs, bipedal robots. So this is just a little bit of a sample of the work that I've done with my colleagues during my graduate school and postdoc days and currently in my laboratory down at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering in Tallahassee, Florida. This particular robot, this particular robot is called Atreus. It walks around and uh, and balances itself uh, completely autonomously. We just tell it which way to walk and it walks in that direction. And Here's another example of a robot called Duris that was designed to be a very efficient uh, walking robot. And here it is striding from heel to toe. And the we, when we were responsible with coming up with the, come up, with coming up with the algorithms for this thing to, to both stay up and also walk while using as little energy cost as possible. So we would say it's maximally efficient in how it walks. And under the hood, there are some Pretty fancy looking uh, algorithms that you might expect to make it go. In fact, uh, this we would run these big optimization algorithms that would figure out all the ways to move all the little electromechanical joints on the robot to give it that striding motion. Uh, but I'm sure I know what a lot of you are thinking. Uh, where does one buy robot shoes? Uh, the answer is the shoe store like anyone else. In fact, we unbolted the robot's foot and took it to Journeys. And this fine gentleman knew exactly what to do and put it on the shoe sizer and said, eh, size 14 men's, and he was exactly right. So thank you to that professional. But like I, like I alluded to, many of you are probably wondering how this is put together on a controller side. And you think of a controller, you think of control algorithms, you probably think of code. And this is in fact the coding train. And you would, you would not be incorrect in assuming that there's code involved in coding these robots. There ab absolutely is. But fundamentally, control algorithms do not need to even be code. 
they are much more general than that. They are typically written as mathematical equations. In fact, when you think of control algorithms, you might want to think a little bit less about lines of code operating in the sequence and more something like this, an equation. Okay. So in fact, control theory is often considered a subset of mathematics more than it is computer science, even though there are often very much co um, computers involved in the code execution. That's, uh, so today we're going to break down uh, controllers, specifically this controller here, and where you can see there's a little P, you can see a little I, you can see a little D. This is called a PID controller. And we're going to break this down for you today. And as to why we use it and why it's so powerful and why, and why, and why, in spite of how complicated these robots can seem, at their core, they're using this. I, almost certainly, the fanciest robot video you've ever seen on YouTube, somewhere down deep in the code, is, this, is, is something like this equation. And it's very accessible in that we're going to try to code it up today and both in Python and also in, in, in these lovely online scripts. I, I'm looking forward to learning that from you, Daniel. That's going to be, to be a fun time. Um, but to get you started, um, one thing I, I want to point out, how to follow along, okay? One is that you can make a free, a free account, and I'm covering up this. Let me just, I'm doing my own technical issues today. Let me make sure you can just read this here. All right. You can make a free account on deepnote.com, okay? And... If you go to deepnote.com, that, that, that is an online notebook that you can start up, that you can run your own Python code from scratch, okay? And you can code up from scratch, but you can make a free account and that allows you to run your own code and also other people's code. I will be coding in Python today and I have some base code set up here and I just made a quick, a quick tiny URL, URL link for you to go to, to go to tinyurl.com slash cartpole hyphen Python cart pole python we'll be controlling this cart pole today um and i'll get to that in a minute if you you can actually run this code by hitting the little run button and you, and it should execute it might take a minute or so and it will create a little a video that you can download and watch okay and i will be coding at this link here cart pole slash control where you can watch watch the code change live Okay. And you can make your own duplicate copy of it once you make your own deep note account. And that's how I'll be coding today. All right. So with that, I'll go over to my whiteboard and we'll get started covering the basics of the PID controller. There you go. Okay. Uh, this is very exciting. This is a very exciting moment because I'm constantly using a whiteboard and I think this might be the first remote whiteboard appearance on the coding train. So. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, and, and as you can see, graphics design is my passion. You can tell from uh, you know, how I've set this up for you all. But yeah, so a PID controller. Let's back up first about what we mean when we want a controller. Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what do we want to do with a robot? And the example we're going to do today is something called the cart pole. Okay, classic example where you have a sliding. Uh, you, I don't know what your whiteboard, your, your whiteboard marker uh, um, uh, luck is like here, Daniel. But uh, you know, I, whenever I go to a marker, I'm like, it's never working exactly as I plan it to go. Even if I, it's almost like a tech check of its own. Let me do, let me do my blue here. So this cart pole is this sliding block. Okay, and you can push it around with a force. You know, you can push it like with your finger, and you want to balance this pole on top. All right. Kind of a classic control that we all learn when we're teaching control theory classes. You know, we're trying to learn the, the, the fancy ways to use controllers, okay? And what we often want to ask ourselves is what do we want to do? And in this case, we want to balance this pole. So we might say, hey, if our pole is at this angle, theta, okay, we want theta to be up. And if you work in radian land, it's, you know, it, it's, that's, that's, radi that's pi radians. If you work in degree land, it's 180 degrees. 
So you would say, hey, I want my theta desired. I desire a theta to be pi radians. Okay. And that is what I consider my output, the thing I want to happen. Okay. And you can also have an input to your system. And there are lots of different kinds of inputs to your system. And the most obvious input to this system is this force, the force that we're applying. Okay. And that is true in that that is the physical input to the system. But in a controller, we will often say, have as our input our theta desired, and our output is our theta actual. So we will have a desired theta, let's say it's pi, okay? And on our output, I'll try to block the glare here. I don't know if I can do that or not, but uh, hopefully. So doing my best here. So say it's theta actual. This is where we're actually at, and we want to get to our desired angle. So when we've achieved our task in a controller, theta actual, we'll use red. We're on a whiteboard streak here. We're going to try new markers here. All By right. the way, I'm quite that, familiar with this problem. That red is beautiful, though. Right. So you're, you're coming through. Let's go with that clear. red. Let's, let's go with that red. All right. So thanks, everyone, as we work through these highly technical difficulties here. We, we want our theta desired. We will put in our theta desired that we choose. And then we want this system to go to, in actuality, where we want to go. So from one point to the other. Okay? And when we've succeeded, the difference between these things is what? It's zero. We want them to be the same. Okay? So we call the difference between these theta desired minus theta actual as a special name. It's called an error. I, I, I can't imagine we're familiar with errors uh, on coherent coding train, are we? I'm sure you never get those. We, we refer to them as happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. <laughs> well, here we call the, the technical term is error, okay? So we say error is equal to theta des, is equal to your desired minus your actual, okay? And we want to drive that error to zero. We want that to be zero. So how do we do that? Okay. Well, what we do is we decide is we need to come up with, with some way of changing our force so that way it maneuvers our system to where the error is zero. Okay. And to make this problem even simpler for explaining what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of the pole and just, just do the cart, which has some mass. Okay, I'm just going to care about the position of the cart, which I'll call x. Okay, so now I'll have some x desired and some x actual. Okay, so at any given time, we can measure where we're actually at, right? You know, we know it's there, or we know it's there, we know it's there. And we know what we want, we get to choose it. So at any given time, we can determine what our error is. We can take our desire to minus our actual, okay? And we'll call that E to save me this precious, deep looking marker, okay? We'll just call it E instead of error. So we need some kind of equation where we assign our force to be equal to something. Okay, and one way that we could do this is we could say, hey, I'm currently here. This is my actual position. I want to get over here, which is my desired position. I can subtract them, get my error. And I can say, well, my force that I apply should be proportional to how far away I am. If I'm far away, I'll, I'm, I'm going to apply a lot of force to book it there. Once I get closer, 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 I release the force. 
I do less force. So as I get closer, I'm trying less hard. And this naturally should drive this block to my desired position. Okay? So I could write that as some constant times your error. Okay? So that constant times that error, if I apply this, if I make this my controller, this equation, if I start over here, my desired is some large number. My actual is much is a much smaller number. So desire minus actual is going to be a large positive number. Therefore, I'm going to apply a large positive force and start moving it. And it starts moving, and then I every every all the time I update what my error is. Oh, I'm a little closer. Now ask yourself, now that I'm a little closer, has my big error gone up or down? Well, it's gone down a little bit. You got a little closer. You're, you're a little closer to your goal. Your error gets smaller. The force you apply gets smaller. You rinse and repeat, and you keep running the control. You just keep running it, okay? And, and how is this going to behave? This is going to behave like another device which pushes, pulls on you the further you get away from where you want to go. So let's say you're here, you want to get here. This is going to change the amount of force you get uh, the more you pull it back. What's that like? It's a spring. Okay? So if I start letting that spring act, it's going to go it's going to boil, 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 right? So it's true, it gets us there. Not very good about stopping. Okay. So how do we get it? So so how do we get it to stop? Well, we don't need, well, so we need more than just something where you have a constant times your error, which I'm now going to label instead of a constant, I'm going to call it some constant k sub p. Okay times your, times E, which is your error. This is our proportional term. So I just going to pause, I'm going to pause you for a second, Christian, because a bunch of people in the chat are discussing, and this is the, this is the like light bulb that went off in my head this week. Yeah. And I guess I can quickly go to, yeah. I quickly go to this screen here, which is that I have a whole bunch of tutorials about these things called vehicles, which are simulated yeah. autonomous agents that steer around a little 2D canvas. Mm -hmm. And a bunch yeah. of the behaviors are things like seek, arrive, path following. And all of those involve this idea of a desired velocity and their current velocity, and looking at yeah. the error as the difference between the, where the, dire the sort of speed and direction they want to go and where they're currently mm -hmm. going, and then applying a steering force in that direction. That is exactly the same concept as yes. what um, Christian is formalizing here in terms of the mathematical equations and applying it to robotics. So this is kind of an amazing uh, thing that happened to me that made me realize all the ways that I might be able to expand and augment those examples. But and, and we're going to get to this. You'll start to see this. But I'm really only scratching the surface by mostly just using this idea of proportional control. So anyway, I just wanted yes. to make that connection for any of the viewers who have been following the Nature of Code book project and those simulated mm -hmm. steering agents. Um, this is like uh, really just sort of peeling back some of the layers of those even yes. further, and we'll see the connections of those more once we bring this code into P5. Okay, so I just wanted to mention Absolutely. that people, no. people were discussing it in the chat. That's awesome. Now that's exactly the kind of, I mean, this is kind of a core concept that applies to lots of different fields. I mean, this the P, PID control, you know, is well over a hundred years, is a hundred ish years old plus and control theory as a, as a field is, is um, it goes back to, especially the 1800s was a big time for that. Um, and it's so, but these concepts creep into lots of different things. And it's really intuitive, right? And let me just break this down a little bit here. We call this a proportional term because the, the amount of force you apply is proportional to your error, right? And how much is it proportional by? Well, we have this constant, right? Who gets to choose that constant? We do, 
We're the control designers today, okay? And this constant has a name. It's called a gain, G-A-I-N, okay? And we get to choose what that is. And in this analogy of the spring, us choosing, choosing that gain, if it's really high, that's like a really stiff spring. If it's really low, it's a very soft spring. Okay, so that's what that term is, okay? But like I said, in a lot of systems, you know, you put a spring in there, it's gonna start vibrating, right? And we don't want this to vibrate, we want it to come to a stop. So we need to add another term, okay? And it's called the derivative term. Okay, and it's going to be KD, which is another kind of, which is another gain that, that who gets to choose it? We do. We get to choose it as the control designer. This is another gain. These can be different and all, almost always will be different. We get to choose, right? Times the derivative of E with respect to time. Now, I know I just jumped into derivatives, which are calculus. Not, I don't want to scare anyone who hasn't seen calculus or bored anyone who has already, okay? But all the derivative is in calculus, if you ever had to explain and sound smart to someone who's never heard of calculus before, that calculus is about change, okay? It's just basically the mathematics of change. And so this is a, the derivative is describing how much your error is changing over time. Class, the thing we classically say is that a position that's changing over time, if I, if, if I want to see how much it's changing over time, I take the derivative with respect, to, with respect to time, and it gives me my velocity. So here I'm moving around. I, if I took the derivative of my signal here, of me moving back and forth. You would have this velocity going up and down, always moving, he's coming to a stop. If I held my arm out constant, took my derivative with respect to time, something that's not changing, and you're asking how much it's changing, the answer is zero. So this is basically saying that we're going to add a term that's not just looking at how far away we are from where we want to get, but how much that error is changing. Now, to give you a little in intuition as to how that works, we just talked about a spring. How the proportional terms like a spring. You pull back that spring, uh, boom, what's the go? It's going to try to drive you to where you want to go. Okay? The derivative term is something like a damper. Now, not everyone has heard of damper. Most people have heard of springs, but dampers are very important mechanical systems. My PhD is in mechanical engineering as well, so I'll, I'll wax philosophic and philosophical here. But like, you know, in a car, in a car, if you were driving around, you know, and every time you hit a pothole, your whole, your whole car goes kong, kong, and it starts bouncing around. It's bouncing around because there's a spring in your car called the suspension but not just a spring. There's something in your car that also makes this, that, that stops this, this uh, the, the bouncing. Otherwise you'd bounce forever, okay? And that's called a damper. And normally what it is, is it's a piston, okay? It's a piston that when you push on it, there's a little fluid that you push through and it resists your motion, okay? And you might see these in your everyday life when you walk around in a building. If you've ever seen a door, that if you were to try to slam it shut, all there's like a little mechanism in the door that might try to stop it. It's up, up by the hinge, you know, that slows it down. That's a damper. And you can even hear the, the, the air whistling through it sometimes, right? Where the air is the fluid that brings it to a stop, okay? So the D term acts like this damper, which gets rid of oscillations. So where we once before had this P term that's going to go boy, 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 boy. if we add this D term, it's going to slow it down. 
so it doesn't oscillate as much or at all potentially, okay? And how big that D term is, this gain, is kind of how goopy our damper is, how much it's going to stop us. If it's very little, it's like pushing through air, not much. You know, if it's, if it's, if you, if it's really big, it's like pushing through molasses, okay? Those are, so that's a P and a D term, and we just add them, okay? Now, sometimes in control, this will get us a lot of the way to where we want to go. I mean, the, the blue robot I was showing before the tennis shoes, we used PD controllers on all of the joints of the robot. We had a fancy algorithm that would tell us that, oh, what our, what our desired angles are of all of our motors. This algorithm would tell us, oh, we want to make this motion. But on board the robot, a PD controller was making the motors drive the joints through those motions. That's how it works. So often a PD control is enough. But sometimes you want another term. Okay. And it's called the integral term. So it's going to be K I integral from zero to T E of tau D tau and you add them together and I'll bring up the equation on the board. So uh, on my, on my uh, PowerPoint slide, so you can yeah. see it again. It, is but, there no, any, yeah, uh, uh, is there any meaning to the order? I mean, obviously you're adding three numbers together, so there's no mathematical yeah. meaning to the order, or is it simply to get the nice PID um, acronym? Or is that an initialism? <laughs> I remember so talking. a PID, oh, no, no, that's great. So, so we got a number of questions you're touching on here, on, on here, yeah. Daniel. Uh, what, what, so um, the, the order, it's, it's just established canonically PID, just that's how it's stuck. Uh, probably because yeah. you could say PID, but no one says PID. People call it PID. Right. Um, and people call it PID. And so, um, but honestly, the I term is the one term I use the least in my in my work. But it right. can be really helpful. Um, where so the P term gets you to where you want to go, or at least it gets you there pretty quickly. Pretty probably pretty close there. All right. The D term slows you down. The I term, it's useful when you have you you you've run your controller but you are not all the way there okay here's an example like imagine that this block we're trying to get to there and we have the p term but the ground is really sticky mm -hmm. like it's like 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 it's really a lot of friction you know and at some point you would you're 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 driving your pd controller and you push on it and so the force is big, the force is smaller, the force is smaller, the force is smaller, the force is smaller. At some point, the force will be small enough that the friction with the ground will stop you before you want to get there, before you're all the way there. And it'll just sit there. It's not going to do anything. It's just like, well, you know, I, my, I say I'm going to apply this much force and then the friction is going to fight me and I'm just going to hang out there and just forever. And we call that... And that's, so that means we'll have an error that isn't zero forever. Hmm. You call that a steady state error, okay, in controls, all right? And one of the most common ways to get rid of steady state error is this integral term, okay? And for those who have not done calculus, an integral is just really adding up the past to get the future, okay? So if you are, and here we are, it's hard to see because my, my, I didn't, my equation spacing is terrible. This is why I wish that they did PDI control because then when I do this lecture, I can do the I at the end, <laughs> plenty of space. But it is doing the error, is integral of the error, meaning it's adding up all of the error from the past and then multiplying it by another gain called KI. So if you are, sitting with this steady state error for a long time, okay? All these other controllers, they're chilling out, doing nothing new. But this I controller is saying, there's an error. 
I'm going to keep adding that up. Adding, 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 adding. And eventually, that will add up enough that it gives us an extra push of force to push us forward again. Okay. So. Yeah, and and in, interestingly enough, like I think I could tie this to the one of the examples that I've used heavily in a lot of tutorials and projects is this uh, flocking simulation where mm. birds are attempting to, well, these pseudo birds called boids are attempting to match various, uh, 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 match their neighbors in certain ways, like stay together, but don't get too close, uh, uh, mm. match their velocity. And I think I was watching one of the uh, PID videos that you sent me as like an explanation had this uh, example of, if you're driving a car and you want to drive at the uh, exact same velocity right next to your friend's car, um, if you don't have the integration, you might always trail right behind them. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know uh, um, because you're yes. uh, yeah. So and, and so it's kind of like with the birds flocking. We don't use integration in flocking because the idea is just to match the velocity, but stay actually like a little bit behind your neighbor. But I'm imagining if we wanted to catch up and be in some type of perfectly horizontal formation, we would maybe need that aspect. Yeah, and, and there's these these concepts have extended extends beyond well beyond robotics. In fact, you know these were invented before there were robots. Uh, right. One of the things was sh the, the, the initial applications of PID was ship navigation uh, for trying to keep a ship on course for an autopilot. So you don't need some some so, so, some Navy sailor sitting at the wheel the whole time. You know, that's a, that's a, that's that that loses interest for me after the first 12 hours or so, you know. Uh, but that's but so that's what these things are used in a lot of kind of automation tasks, but also in modeling how how organisms Move around. I mean, I, I, I have the good fortune of going to biology conferences every uh, you know, every year, uh, just about each year, and uh, they people will use control systems like this to model animal behavior at times. So that's the big picture, and that's what we're going to try to implement today with a with a primary emphasis on the P and the D control. We can do the I control as well. Uh, but the P and the D will get a lot of your job done for you. All right. Cool. Let's go back to the board. So just so we have these links up for you all to look at, I'm going to be building atop this base code here from cart pole slash the high pipe and Python here. Okay. That's going to take you to a deep note link, which should be publicly shared. And you should be able to see. Let me know, Daniel, if you have a hard time getting to it or anything. Um, but it, 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 you feel free to make a free account on deepnote.com. You have like, I think, 100 hours a month or something you can use for free, which is normally plenty uh, for the tasks that I need to do. And I'm going there, to be going to carpool hyper control to guess. There, there's a question in the chat which, is, which yeah. asks, um, just to clarify, the constants are positive, right? Are the constants always positive obviously they need to the air the the direction of the error is what's sort of controlling the direction of the force but are the constants always positive i guess is my question is the question for the, the constant the constants should almost always be positive i should in fact i will go say it always positive <laughs> all right okay that's a great question so we will be dealing if you are if you're doing with negative gains you probably flip the sign somewhere else in your code uh so the reason being um let's just take this d term OK, this D term, if it's positive, it is always pushing against the motion of your object. OK, should be trying to slow things down, which is good because then you're taking energy out of your system. OK, if you ever had a negative damper, those things don't exist in real life because they basically just shoot energy into the system out of nowhere you know, and, and will drive things to be unstable. So negative gains tend to be unstable. I think there's the classic, there's a joke that uh, is like the most professory joke I've heard in a while, which is the story of the, uh, of, of, of the curmudgeon -y old controls professor, that the controls professor was always, you know, like it, it was, was really hard on their students. And, and, and by the end of the term, the students who worked really hard they didn't understand why they were still being, you know, taught, why they were still being berated for not doing well enough. And... The, uh, and the, the controls professor said, well, when you are uh, when you're in a control system, if you have a negative gain, 
that leads to positive feedback and positive feedback is always unstable. <laughs> so that's why I only give you negative feedback. So I don't like telling that joke because it's like the most professory joke <laughs> I've heard, but yeah. So, but like it's, so the, basically uh, it, it, it creates unstable systems when you make the game negative and for how you choose games, we're going to do some strategies today that are good heuristics, good rules of thumb, but you can take entire courses in engineering departments and math departments on how to choose these numbers. There are some really sophisticated mathematical ways to, to take your system, take your task, and then these numbers pop out, these gains. But today we'll do it with rules of thumb. All right. Thanks for the question. All right. So let's go away here. Okay, so now if you go to the URL that I had before, you should see some kind of interface like this, where this is DeepNote, and DeepNote has notebooks in Python that you can write up codes and just execute the notebook. And this prevents you from necessarily having to have your own interpreter on your computer. This so this way you can just go to a web browser and just start working on things. It's also Deep Note is good for for sharing books for collaboration. I know a lot of people like Google Colab. That's great too. That's a totally a great resource. I, don't, I this is just one I've used for my class in the past. It also interfaces with some of my uh, really technical collaborators. At, at, at institutions like Toyota, where they're pushing, they have Toyota Research Institute doing lots of robotics research that they will have deep note versions of, which is really cool. Maybe a future, we'll have to get into that in a, in a future stream. But so what you do is you click on the run button up here, and then it'll take up, and then it, it should run the code at the link that, that, that you're at. And what you'll see is that it looks like it should be done. Okay, and it will run all this code. And this code is our cart poll. And you'll see at the bottom, there's just an image of what the cart poll looks like. But when you've run the code, you'll notice on the right-hand side. Oh. I'm sorry, a couple people are saying that the font size is a little bit small for them. Is there a quick way to zoom into the page? Or there you go. Thank you. Good to know. All right, so let's see if I can uh, get rid of that so that we can see it a little better. Thank you for letting me know. See if I can make this a little smaller over here. Well, this is, hopefully good. this will be a little bit good. Yeah. Thank you very much. So yeah. So anyway, this is code. Thankfully, I was not explaining any part of the code specifically. But if you click this Run Notebook button, it'll run it over the course of I think about a minute, just because it has to get the servers to do it. And over on the right will pop up this little thing that says Simulation.mp4, and that's going to run. That's an animation that you can then download. This is why I look especially look forward to seeing how you handle this, Daniel. You have a much more <laughs> real real time way of getting your of your animations up here. And so I'm going to download that. I'm going to run it, and it give you an MP4 file that you can run on your computer. And there's this little cart pole where there's a mass to the cart, and then there's a mass on the end of that little pole, and it just swings around. See that? Cool, right? Currently, zero control in it, though, right? Zero control. So that's what we're going to add today. So the first thing we're going to try to do is going to we're going to try to control just the cart. Okay, we're going to move the cart from where we start, which is at like zero, and let's move it to like position of like three. Okay, and we're going to use the PID controller to do it. So let's go for it. So we'll go back to the code, and I'll I'll give you a little tour of what's going on. Okay, so. This is code that was originally made by my PhD student, Jacob Hackett. Thank you very much to Jacob. That is set up to automatically generate this simulation of the pendulum on a cart. And up at the top here is some code using FFmpeg. That's, it's just baseline code to start making it, how, and setting up how to make a video in code. That's all it's doing. Don't have to worry about any of that. I've, I've carefully partitioned out where you do have to worry about stuff. So. Here you have all of your libraries and in Python and, and in Python, a super popular one is called NumPy, NumPy, or I don't know who pronounces it in what way, but this is how you do a lot of your good numerical 
uh, numerics and mathematics in Python, okay? And a number of other things that we use, and that's all going to go into basically the simulation part, the thing that is simulating the mechanics of this thing swinging around, okay? Then we're going to define the parameters of our cart pole. And you'll see that there's gravity, there's a length, there's the mass of each cart. Ignore the little pop-ups that keep coming up here. They're, they try to be helpful. They try to be helpful with these pop-ups. And so you can change those, those parameters around as you would like, okay? And here are some parameters of the simulation. For those of you who don't know how these computer simulations work, they work by taking little time steps in time and saying, hey, I'm currently at this position and this speed. And I'm going to use what I call the equations of motion and compute how much this thing should move over the next tiny bit of time, some little time step. And that's what this DT is. Okay. So, and then it will, then it will compute how it moves over that time step. It says, this is where I am now. Reuse those equations to figure out where I need to be next and then next and next and next, and then repeat until you have a full simulation of the motion of your system. That's what this little time step is. And there are many ways to do that. We're using a fairly simple method called Euler's method. That's for another time. Did you ever cover Euler's method on your uh, on your stream here, Daniel? Is this a thing that uh, I yes, imagine so you have to simulate things? This is a frequent discussion. Uh, and so yeah, yeah, Euler's integration, that's the primary integration method I use in almost all of my um, examples, yes. And we've talked about various other techniques like verlet integration, and there's like the runge kutta, which I'm always mispronouncing. Yeah. So it, it, it's come up before and is also a big aspect of uh, the various different kinds of physics simulations I've done. Great, so yeah, so that's what's happening here. So nothing, nothing you haven't seen before and and we just initialize, we do some initializations of our variables. And I think that the, the one of the things that we do change is we can change our starting position of our pendulum on a cart, okay? I said that I'm gonna start it at position of zero with a speed of zero. And then I'm gonna change the pole angle, excuse me, to be nine, ten, nine pi over 10. So like nine tenths of pi. So very close to pi, kind of. So kind of close to pi. and with an initial angular velocity of zero. That's, so we set those initial conditions there. And so those, so that's how we set where the part, where the card starts. And then we get down to the simulation loop. This is where we are taking steps through time to get our simulation, simulation, simulation. I blocked off this handy dandy little section here for this is where we're defining our control input. So that's gonna be our control our controller right here, all right? So, and the le level of Python we'll need to use is very simple. So you don't have to worry about it too much if you haven't learned Python before. But if you have, you can tear it apart and do what you want with it. And then down here, we have the actual simulation calculations for the pendulum on a cart. And I know that you've cal you, you simulated the double pendulum in the past, which is a pretty darn complex system. So there are a number of ways to do it. Uh, here, we actually set up the equations of motions as a matrix operation that we then solve and then come up with our accelerations for our equations of motion. That's what we do here. And then at the end, there's all of the, all of the stuff where we define our animation. So any Python wizards or Python enthusiasts or Python learners want to mess around with how the animation looks, you know, put a cat on the end of the pole by all means. So that's all that's going down at the end. So what we're going to clearly focus on though, is the controller. So, so let's go back up to our controller. And I've co I've coded I've commented this up already so that way you know how to reference what variables and how, okay? So let's start by just control by just moving the cart to that position 3. So let's have a desired x which I will label as x des is equal to 3. And I'll resist not typing a semicolon for my other languages. Okay. All right. So we have, well, so, well, this is our desired cart position. Okay. All right. And we're going to do a P controller to start. So let's do a KP and let's just set KP equal to 50. All right. KP is equal to 50. Now our, we need to know what our error is, E. So I'm just going to define E as being our desired minus actual. 
I always remember desire in mind is actual like district attorney by some mnemonic device. Desired minus your actual. So our desire is X des, and our actual. I gave you a convenient little thing you can grab X vec I, which you actually do minus one. Button here, minus one. So basically, it's our last measured position is what this is. So X I minus one. So here is our actual force. You'll notice it says U, and you can say Christian. Force doesn't start with U. That's correct. In control theory, control inputs are often designated as a U. That's just a convention we like to have. Okay. Control inputs are U's. And so we're going to say K. Which is going to, so our proportional controller is going to be KP times error. Simple enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up and just run this block I'm in. That'll save you from having to run this block. You don't need to run this top block every time. This just installs FFmpeg so we can make animations. So you can run the whole thing. That's fine. I'll just redo this, do this command. And that's not the best. And are people able to see the text OK enough? Or should we uh, do? Um... It looks good, I think. Good. Great. OK. I can always make it bigger. I just, I'll just wish I had a bigger monitor. That's all. So I'm going to click that little arrow that was right there. And it's just going to execute everything in the second big block which has the simulation, okay? This will take a little bit. And, you'll, and while, it's, and while it's, it's waiting for the server to run our code, I'll point out that this is going to try its darndest to keep the, it's, it's going to try to push the block toward that position, but it's not gonna know how to stop. This is the spring attached to our block. And I chose 50. And people say, hey, is that big or is that small? Uh, it honestly depends on your system. Okay. And is, is this a sort of idealized system? Is there any friction between the cart and the ground um, or other forces at play? This Air is a resistance. pretty idealized system. This is a pretty <laughs> idealized system. It has, there, there, there is friction with the ground by turned it off just, just because for, for demonstration purposes, but very idealized system, Daniel. All right, looks like it's done. So I'm going to uh, download this and cross my fingers, see how it goes. Whoa, hey, look at that. It's a spring, just like we anticipated with a little pendulum swinging around. Again, we don't care about the pendulum. So pretty much as we anticipated. So that's the P control. Let's add the D controller here, okay? So we have a proportional game. Now let's make a derivative game. Now, my rule of thumb is I try to make my derivative gains about one fifth of the proportional gain if I'm just messing around. If I don't have any math to tell me otherwise, it's a good starting point. Okay, so I'll make it 10. That's our derivative game. The thing that's going to slow us down. Okay. And that's going to be proportional to the derivative of our error, OK? And so just, to, and I'll, I'll go back to the board and say, well, what's the derivative of our error? And I'll do just a little basic calculus. Don't fret if you haven't seen calculus before, OK? That if we are taking the derivative with respect to time of our error, and our error Turn my microphone around. And our error is your x desired minus x actual. That's equal to taking the derivative of each of them individually and subtracting them. This is just a property of calculus, OK? So this is the rate of change of x desired, and this is the rate of change of our x actual. Now our x desired, who decided it? We did. Is it changing? No, it's just a constant. So we draw a little arrow that goes through it and says it goes to zero. That's zero. Now, 
the rate that our actual position is changing over time, we talked about this before. That's the velocity, right? That's the velocity term. So our time derivative of, of error is equal to minus d dt of our actual position, so our measured velocity. And in our simulation, we've measured that information. So we can use that directly. So back to the code. All right, so we're going to create DE underscore DT. That's our derivative. Sometimes uh, we would say E dot. Whenever you take a derivative with respect to time, sometimes you just put a little dot above it. It's easier. Saves us marker, precious marker space, mar mar marker, uh, you know, marker stuff, marker magic. And so it's equal to minus the derivative. So that's, and we have that stored in DX vec. So right there, that's the velocity minus that. Oh, so we have the DP. Now we're going to add together, we're going to add our D term. So we're going to say KD times BE DT. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to rerun this block of code and hope I didn't screw something up. I know it'll be the first time anyone's ever screwed up a line of code on your stream. So I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be setting any records here, but you know, I guess if I'm going to do something on, okay. But you can see how simple that controller is as we're waiting for this to go. You might've thought a robot controller might be a bunch of if then statements, a bunch of catches, a bunch of cases, a bunch of do this, then do that. And that can be in a robot controller, but it doesn't have to be. It can be these continuous little math equations. Um, and while this is running, I'll say that, hey, there's theoretically nothing stopping you from making these gains enormous. You can make them a million, okay? And in the simulation, sometimes that works really well. Um, <laughs> sometimes. But on real robots, the reason you don't do that. Oh, did I screw up something? Do we have that? KD. They're running it. I see an error going on here. Oh, it didn't like something. Let me just give it a little bit. Run that again. So, in yeah, you, is, is yours working? I see you have you put it in here. Or is it still waiting here? Uh, you, so you can tell if it says if, if it's still running. You can tell if it has a little stop, a little swirly swirly wheel, right? And it should go through. It looks like it, it errored on the making of the end of the video part which i sure hope it didn't because that's the part i'm least happy to debug <laughs> um, and it was working while it's fine running there 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 is some uh, i had a question actually in my mind and some some people are asking them like i have a good yeah. sense of how i tune these kinds of parameters these constants in a simulation that i might be doing for yeah. uh, a code example of that goes on a website or in an animation but you're dealing where with and maybe this is what you're getting to, real physical objects. You know, you, you have it on too big, it's, it could like crash and break. So yes, how can. do you, you know, how do you, what is the process for kind of tuning all of these parameters? Do you actually do a lot of simulating um, first on a computer before you apply it in, in physical reality? So yeah, so the short, the short answer is yes. We, we, when we can, we try to build a simulation of a robot and try to get gains on it. Now we know that that simulation will be imperfect. Okay, you know, I, I don't know if this has been said on your channel, but I know it's been said a million times and ever, all kinds of engineering and sciences, but all models are wrong. Right. But some are useful. Are useful, yes. But some are <laughs> useful, right? And so, and, and so like we'll have a simulation model and it'll give us, tell us if we're in the right ballpark, right? Um, but, the, but you will almost, so that will give you a good first guess for the gains. But I will say, and we do this with our robots all the time, like like some of the robot testing is exciting when it's trying to walk. Some of it's incredibly boring where you'll have this hardworking student will will uh, will go to the robot it'll, it, uh, and, and it'll take its arm and we'll just be like trying to jerk it like a little left to the right, you know, a little bit. And what is he doing? He's tuning up the gains. He's starting very, very small. So it's applying almost no force. And then just to, you know, almost almost with a knob, dialing them up to where he expects them to be good, 
and where she might say, okay, that's that's good. That's we're getting about to the range where I expect that they'll be good. But are but is it good? Does it need to be a little tighter? Does it need to be a little looser? So there's often a, a in robots a little bit of manual play, and and that's fun. So let's see. Did we just run here? I just ran my simulation. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Look what's going on here. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. Look what it's trying to do. So it is it is trying to keep it in that position there, but it's actually got a little disturbance on it. You see that? It's the pendulum being whipped around at Mach 3. And it's still trying to hold that position, even though it's uh, even though it's jittering it around. Okay. So it's trying to do its best to hold it there. Right? So we did it. I would say we, we effectively did it. If we didn't have that pendulum on there, it would be like almost perfect, right? So that's a very simple control of the cart, okay? Now, what we really want to control, though, is the pendulum. And this can be a trickier proposition, or it can sometimes be a simpler proposition, right? Where we're going to say we want to apply a force that is um, that is proportional to the error, not of the cart, but of the pendulum and can you show derivative the, so, game. Sorry, yeah, I'm, sure, can I'm you show again. the uh, tiny URL link again real quick? A couple people were looking for it. it and I, I failed Absolutely. to get it into the chat. <laughs> I will put it in the tiny chat. So. so you can find me current. So right here, currently I'm coding on tinyurl.com slash cartpole control. The base code oh. you can edit is at cartpole Python. Okay. Oh, actually, and I'm, I'm, my face is in the way. Let me get that out of the way for you. Sure. Cart pull. I'm putting Thank them into the asking. chat now. So yeah, so we can put that. Yeah, maybe in the description or whatever we want to yep. do. Yeah, yep. these questions are great. I I welcome them. So another question came up. Actually, I was gonna. I was sort of saving some for later, but since we took a moment to chat here yeah. for a second. Um, a lot of my viewers I know are people at least, I would say viewers, but also like students that I work with at NYU in particular work with Arduino a lot. And is this a particular, mm -hmm. uh, is that a microcontroller that you work with at all in your lab? And uh, is the PID controller algorithm something that could be applied to like an Arduino controlling a servo motor or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so yeah, we do use Arduinos all the time in the laboratory. Um, they're great for especially small robots when we are just trying to prototype something. And uh, or or sort of proof of concept robot that might be for a scientific test. I remember I had to make a I I, I uh, you know maybe this is a story that would, would tie a few things together. I remember when I was on uh, when I was on Survivor when I was as you were mentioning I there was a challenge where it went on for hours so I had nothing to do but talk. And one of the things you watch the episode of this of the if you're watching the show you can't miss this challenge I mean, at least it'd be hard to miss this challenge it's not, it, it just if you're watching you you'll, you'll know which one i'm talking about and i mentioned that i had to design a plant root robot a robot that was basically a growing plant root that would move in the soil and this was a scientific study for trying to to determine what strategies for how roots grow would be best for penetrating through different materials and and um, it, it was specifically with a uh, in collaboration with a group at Duke that does that, that that does genetic knockout studies of plants and noticed that there are some ways that plants grow that they they grow straight and sometimes the root little wiggles at the end. Okay, and does that wiggle and that wiggle was something that showed up in plants that they could knock out and try with real plants to see if it's better at growing, but they wanted to also try it with a robot. And so I made a, in this motion, this, this wiggle is called circumnutation, circumnutation. And so we had, we used our Arduino to, uh, to control the, the wiggle of the plant. And there we use something called a stepper motor and a stepper motor. Um, you can just tell it to click one wheel at a time. It'll just click to a position. Okay. And so you don't need a PID controller just to do that, to click to a position. However, if you have any kind of motor where you're applying current or a torque or a voltage that you control up or down, PID control is great for that. So, but I also got, but I, but I was, but the project that I was talking about during that challenge was using an Arduino to uh, control the circumnutating plant robot. That's what that was. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. So it looks like that, that, um, so that, so that ran and it managed to hold that position. At roughly three, I bet if we didn't have, I mean, you could turn off the pendulum 
by making it massless or very, very close to massless. If you went up to the top, if you went to the top of the code and changed the pendulum mass to like 0 0.001, it would probably do extremely well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's try to control the actual angle of the pole. All right. So let's go. Well, maybe we can make this super easy. So instead of having an X desired, let's just have a theta desired, an angle. So theta des. All right. And we're going to make that theta. Ah, darn it teleported me in the code all right so <laughs> theta des so we want our desired theta to be pi so not that down is zero up is of is half a rotation half of two pi is pi so in, in in python you have to say np dot pi because the numpy package is the one that tells you what pi is okay so all right and now we're going to come up, so now we have to say our error now, instead of being x des minus x vec, it's theta des minus theta vec. And de dt, instead of being minus dx vec, it's minus d theta vec. And we'll see how this works. We'll see how this goes. I'm just going to run this part of this block of the code. I don't need to scroll up. I can just click that little arrow over there. We'll see how this works. I haven't tried this set of games before, so your guess is as good as mine uh, as to how this goes. But yeah. And you, uh, sorry, I was uh, answering questions in the chat while I was sort of half listening to you. So I was curious. So you had to change both the, um, obviously you're changing the desired and the error to calculating based on the angle, but now you're also mm -hmm. looking at the angular velocity of the yes. pendulum, no longer the velocity yes. of the cart itself. So the cart's position plays no role anymore. Uh, or its Correct. position or velocity, you're only looking at the, the, you're sensing basically just the movement of the pendulum. That's exactly right, Daniel. And so, yeah, so we've, we've now changed it. So we're just caring about that thing staying up. Mm -hmm. We don't care where the park cart goes. Like, it's like if we can, if we are balancing a rod on our hand, we can move our hand all over as long as the, the thing stays up. Right. So, all right. It looks like it ran. This time it didn't error in that weird way that I can't explain. The first time that's happened. Let's see. All right. Let's see what happened when it ran. Oh, it's trying to catch up. There you go. <laughs> it really doesn't care where it's going. It really doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, so, hey, it didn't fall down, at least as far as we knew. Right. So, we, so we can mess with the gains a bit more. And let's, uh, what, and let's, and we can also start where, Let's have the cart start a little bit closer to the top. So maybe it doesn't have to make as much as extreme maneuver while we're trying it out. And this is a good strategy if you're trying to test out a controller and you want to know if you just got it right at all. Try to get it started off really close to where you want to go and see if it'll get it there. And so and then if it goes wild, any if, if, it, if it flails around anyway, you know you probably are doing something wrong. 50% chance it's a sign error somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a negative where you shouldn't. So I'm going to make, oh, did I rerun it? Okay, I'm going to stop execution. Didn't mean to rerun it. So I'm going to change instead of not my, I'll go up to my initial starting position where instead of having nine over 10 pi, I'm going to change it to 9.5 out of 10 pi. Okay, so pretty close. Or we can even go. 9.8 out of 10 pi, just to, just to see if it works. So I'll rerun this code here. Um, so, and what we should expect, at least what I'll expect to happen is that it's keeping the system pretty close to up. It keeps it from going down. Now, if it runs off to the distance, what I'm gonna try first try to do is increase my P gain. Cause what that's, the, cause what I want the system to do is to push harder on the cart when there's an error, so that way it might push it past where the pen, where the pendulum is. And so it might start going back. But we might have to play around with that a little bit. But I will point out, the thing hasn't fallen down yet. So yeah. good. <laughs> That's not too bad for games we just, like, I, we just plucked out of nowhere. You just need so, infinite space. <laughs> yeah, just infinite space, right? Yeah. And so, so 
this will be the game. And I, the one thing I think will be fun and when you're doing the the, um, the JavaScript version of this, that we have ability to rapidly try new things. Yeah. No, it's, it it's so this I'm, is kind of, I mean, th uh, I am learning so much and fascinated and just enjoying this so much, but the the amount of time <laughs> between changing a variable and seeing the result is is very painful to me uh, no. because that that's sort of, and I'm so, that's why I'm so excited for this collaboration because I think there's some, well, JavaScript and the browser obviously have a yes. lot of limitations yeah. in terms of scientific yeah. computing. Um, yeah. to be able to quickly demonstrate and change. You know, we could interactively change the game with a slider, for example, and have yeah. it continue to run. So anyway, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. And I'll, I'll point out that, hey, look, there, it, you know, managed to balance the pendulum. It was a little bit of an error and it managed to actually, yeah. Yeah. looks That's like great. it managed to stick it there. Yeah, so so it balanced it. And so we at least those gains at least worked in principle for the small error. Now we can tune them up um and and in in the in the in javascript and uh that's maybe will be our next step i think but before we go there i'll, I'll talk just a little bit about the integral term the okay. integral term because because sometimes people are like how do you how do you do the integral you know you know dr hibiki uh and there's that's all often the one that that gets people just a little bit confused okay and so and justifiably because it's a little bit more complicated because you actually have to start keeping track of how uh, you're adding up over time this error. So you need some kind of variable in which you are storing this added up error. So let's do that and, and I'll and I'll add this to our, um, so I'm gonna have to actually make some changes to the base code in order to do that. So what I'm initially setting up here are what I call sort of state vectors. And these are these these are vectors, just lists of point of, of, of numbers that are storing the position over time, the velocity over time of all of the of all the things that are moving around. We're just going to add another one for the integral of our error. Okay, so I, I would say even you know we can even simplify this a little bit more. So what we're going to say right before the simulation loop, we're going to say our initial error integral is zero. I'll create a variable called error int. And this is just above the simulation loop. That's where we're doing this, right? Equal to zero. And then inside the loop, we're going to create, we're going to update our error int what do we just call it? Error int as being equal to the previous error int plus the current error times. You remember that little time step that we talked about in the simulation for how this tiny little step of time? We're going to multiply it by that. I believe it's dt. I'm just going to check and make sure that's the right variable's name. dt. So a thousandth of a second, this tiny little period of time. DP. There we go. So there you have your error integral. Now, what else do we need to add an integral term to this controller? Well, we have a K, we have, oh, goodness. Teleported me again. <laughs> you have, you have an error, you have a, you have a gain for your proportional term, gain for your derivative term, you need a gain for your integral term. So KI. And we'll make it one. This is often my smallest term, my smallest gain when I'm doing PID control, if I if and when I want to use it. So it's the inter, integral gain, which I have a disorder in which I can only spell it integral every time, integral, I, uh, every time I spell it wrong. So integral gain. So now we add this term, so they say ki times error integral. Done. That's our integral gain. Okay. So now we have P, I, D, all three components. And if we decide we don't need I, guess what we can do? We can teleport away and then come back and then do what I was going to do in just a second. We can make the, error, the integral term zero. Doesn't exist. Turn it off. So I'll do one quick run of this. And I think that that is the core of what we need to start doing this in yeah. JavaScript. Yeah, I've got a few questions that I'll that that, that I've been noting perfect. down once once. Well, I guess like while it's running, maybe I'll ask you some of them. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, somebody, I have no idea what this means. <laughs> somebody asked um, yeah. how, uh, about if, whether this relates to something called an LQR regulator. <laughs> is that something you oh. recognize? Is that a term you recognize? I, <laughs> it absolutely is. I, I, we got we, we, we have some ringers in, in the chat today, the LQR regulator. So uh, so the, the short answer is yes. And I mentioned before that, you know, we're picking games, right? Like and there, there are these, these rules of thumb we're using, but there's an entire mathematics to choosing games more intelligently. So that way, I mean, that way, theoretically, you don't have to get guess and check like with a yeah. robot. I can do a little bit of guess and check, uh, but what if I was doing gains for a power plant? Uh, and, and, you know, determining how much I'm going to open the valve that's going to to the coolant. You know, you don't want to guess and check on that. However, if you have the equations of motion, the system, what we'll call the system dynamics of your system, you can use this use control theory to come up with the gains. And one of the, which is called LQR, is one method for doing that. That's a method of what we call optimal control, where we, instead of defining um, just where we want to go, we define what we call a cost function, which we say, oh, that, that where we define how much mm -hmm. it costs to operate our controller. And so that could be saying that, you know, we have a cost that penalizes how far we are away from where we want to be, but also penalizes how much effort we use to get there. And this is the proportion that we want to care about both. And theoretically, LQR, if you run this system, if you run this process, will give you the optimal best gains to minimize that cost. And that's what LQR does. So it will give it. you the PID that's absolutely best. Yeah. But we would take, yes, but it requires us to do a little bit more math. And to take the system, the, the the math that's of this pendulum on a cart, and do some a little bit of you know trickiness with it. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things when I was poking around looking at uh, this topic, I saw a paper about using genetic algorithms to evolve the optimal um, gains for PID. So there, I think there's yep. lots of interesting methodologies you could use yes. to, to sort of like tune those parameters. Yes, it, it, and they all have strengths and weaknesses. So yeah. these the LQR. Uh, as it stands for linear quadratic regulator, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, a it's what it stands for. But if we break down what that is, that first word linear says that your system should be what we call a linear system, meaning that you put in a little bit, you get out a little bit, you put in a lot more, you get out a lot more. Um, but the pendulum part of this is not a linear system. Okay. It's not linear because um, if I put in a little bit of effort when the pendulum's at the bottom, it'll move a little bit and come back, right? If I put in a little bit of effort when the pendulum's at the top, it's going to go crazy, right? So it's nonlinear. So you can use, uh, so, so theoretically, <laughs> my, the LQR doesn't work. Now, in practice, we're good at making it work. In control theory, we learn the ways to linearize the system, pretend it's linear, uh, but genetic algorithms don't care right like the, much like the honey badger the genetic algorithms we can you can get you can give it whatever you want and it will try to come up with a solution but it you but you don't have those guarantees like lqr mathematicians from 100 years ago figured out how to the the, the, the proof that says these are the best gains for that system so it's this balance between what you can prove and what you can do so it looks like the I term didn't do much, didn't kill the system, didn't do much either. Still going. But I think that, but we can balance. I think yeah. this is a good time to hand it over. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, no, this is perfect. And, and a good uh, segue here in that, um, oh, and I've, I've uh, a good segue in that, you know, there's some other questions that maybe we can come back to towards yeah. the end um, that I've yeah, been noting down do. here. Um, but a lot of the discussion in the chat, which was super interesting to read was, Oh, I, I think I saw somebody try this in Unity. Or, oh, you know what you could do? You could use Pygame. So if you wanted to have it in Python, but have it be real time and interactive, you can use Pygame yeah, for that. Absolutely. So this, this is really like kind of, I think, where yes. we're going now with this stream. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. just so excited about this topic that I have to 
kind of uh, my my uh, my eyes are too big for my stomach. I think is the right uh, maybe uh, metaphor here. That I just want I I want to try to work in JavaScript and P5 to take a few steps towards beginning the idea of an interactive simulation around this topic. Now that I've now that we've yeah. been taught about it in such detail, but I do think it's something that I would really like to come back to, and we can maybe do some additional live streams, uh, or I might make some. I, I really hope to do like a specific coding challenge video about a PID controller. Um, so yeah. So I think this is a good time to segue. Let's see if I can uh, press this button. Hopefully this works. Great. So yeah, now yeah. what we're looking at is, and I'm just going to make um, uh, Christian a little bit smaller here to not block the code. Uh, does so I does, think my, does my be... voice pitch get higher when you do that? Is that how <laughs> yeah, that works? No, no I, 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 it's funny. I have a video about um, the, there's a JavaScript array function called reduce, which is a, a way to sort of like summarize an array of numbers all into one value. I mean, that's a very sort of crude way of describing it, but I, I have this like shtick where I keep making myself smaller in the video anyway. <laughs> Nobody should watch that one. It's really, I should, that should be deleted from the internet. Um, but um, so uh, let's see. So a couple, a couple thoughts here that I want to just begin with. So one is, so for, oh, so before I go on though, just, you know, everybody stick with us. We're, I mean, if you have somewhere to go, don't worry. This will all be archived. You can come back and watch it later. After the stream is over, I'll make sure to update the video description with all of the links um, of, of, of Python code that have all been demonstrated, yes. as well as any other sort of extra material. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll also make sure we yeah. sort of share on social media. Speaking of which, just so we get, uh, get this now for anyone who's here, um, if you look yeah. at the video description currently, you will find Christian's uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, probably what I really like to highlight is Twitch channel, where if I'm not mistaken, you do a bunch of different things, but sometimes pop up lectures on various <laughs> topics yeah. related to science and robots. Yeah, I should, I should, I should, I should I guess, uh, plug those things. Yes, yeah, so uh, so I do I do occasional Twitch streams, which I uh, I'm still figuring out how to save videos on Twitch, but I'm doing it. Is what, what I'll, I'll I'll sometimes I'll just run to the whiteboard, and I will. You know, Put a concept up there, and we might throw together some code, or just you know turn it into a lecture, or just a Q and A session um, about a, a number of topics. So, so feel free to follow me on there, and and, uh, and I look forward to hearing your feedback on Twitter or or, or any or any or any of these platforms. Um, and I, I encourage you to use all kinds of ways of adapting this code. I mean, I'm doing it on Deep Note for because we use it for other things, but. Copy that code. You can put it on your own pie charm on your own computer. Whatever, whatever will run it faster for you. That's all great. So I welcome all that. So I, I appreciate your patience and listening to the lecture. No, this has been fantastic. And but, but we're not saying goodbye. I just wanted to make sure because yeah. I know sometimes these streams they they go on for quite a long period of time, and I yes. try to wrap up at the end. But I wanted to make sure that people yeah. who wanted to know more about. Uh, um, Dr. Hubicki's work and follow uh, the lab's research. You can find all that. And again, uh, after the stream's over, we'll make sure to update the description with all, all the yeah. stuff. Um, and, and of course, you can join the Coding Train Discord where we have uh, discussions and sharing about the various topics. So you can ask questions and things there. Okay, but um, so I'm going to start to jump in. Um, you know, I don't know what the ratio of people who are, came here from like <laughs> Python and robotics control versus people who came here from creative coding and, and people. JS, but just to set the stage for a moment, um, what I am going to transition into doing, it's funny, like I, I think that like my output is a little bit, it has like the night shift on for some reason. So the screen is a little bit, this, I don't, I've never seen this before in this setup, but anyway, it's fine. You can see it. Um, but um, um, I'm going to use a library called P5.js. And P5.js is a JavaScript library for uh, what is referred to as creative coding. It's a very broad term, but essentially, if you're interested in art and design and animation and play and experiments and games, it's a very beginner-friendly environment for doing real-time animations and graphics and more um, in the browser. I also think, and I'm, I'm a little bit torn about this, but I am going to start with this physics library called matter.js. So I've been going back and forth in my head all week about this. Um, if you look at my, um, I'll just pull this up here in case you're not familiar with it. But if you're, if you're kind of new to the world of physics simulation in JavaScript, um, you can um, take a look at this particular book that I have online all about vectors and forces and oscillation. And you know, if I scroll down in here, we're going to find 
you know, uh, all about uh, pendulums. And so this is a whole uh, book that is sort of the foundation of a lot of the coding examples and tutorials that I do. And for the most part, I am always coding these, I, 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 it's, it's wrong to say from scratch because I'm, I'm using P5 and all sorts of other dependencies and libraries, but I'm not using a physics engine. I am doing the, what, what Christian referred to as Euler integration in the code. And in fact, um, I'm just gonna pull up this example really quickly, uh, which is about the seek behavior. If we look here, um, this, where's the update function, right? This is Euler integration. We take the acceleration and we add it to velocity. We take the velocity and we add it to position, right? And we're accumulating all the forces in the apply force into the acceleration variable. So I would like to investigate PID controllers as they are connected more to um, the sort of like raw physics simulations in nature of code. But I think I'm curious to see how does just applying this concept in a very quick and dirty way to a basic example that uses a physics engine. And to be clear, what the physics engine is doing is I'm able to just say like, hey, there's a round thing over here, there's a square thing over here, there's gravity, and I'm gonna put this force in the system, you know, go. So we'll see how well this works, but can we set up a little cart on a ground? Can we apply forces by pushing it left, you know, right or left and giving it a uh, calculate those forces based on PID control. So that's kind of my goal. I, I don't know. Do you have any comments or questions about that, Christian, as I'm setting this up here? No, th this is great. I, I, I'm very excited to, to see all uh, new ways to, I mean, I mean and, and as you're, as you're getting that set up, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, some of the bring up process for when I'm trying a new system is the time it takes for me to code up the simulation. That's the first step that we have to do uh, when I want to try to code a new robot in a simulation is I need the simulator. And I think there's a lot of room for interesting ways to ge to generate physics simulations. I mean, I, I, you know, sometimes I'll go straight to the equations, but geez, you know, it'd be good uh, uh, to... Uh, to do something where you pop in the pop, pop in stuff in the system and it just and, and, and uh, they just bump around and go from there. So that's exciting. Great. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm really stuck on the fact that the I'm gonna have to just let it go. But if something is yeah. going on with my screen, like look how like look at the top right here. This is not the correct like back bar. Like some weird glitch just happened and night shift turned on. It's like it thinks it's the middle of the night and I should be sleeping. So it's it's made, it's it's reduced the blue light or something <laughs> in the in the uh but I think we'll be able to keep going. I'll I'll let the go. If anybody knows where that setting is and wants to pop it into the chat, I might like to fix that. But okay. Well you are you're a professional that cares about that sort of things. I was like, I didn't even I notice until you told me, but yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm recording everything to disc also from today because as, as the viewers know, I often take content from live streams and remix it into sort of like a shorter edited video. Um, so which I was thinking about maybe doing, and so it'll bother me forever that the recorded, you know, you know what I can do that. Uh, I'm going to let it go though. It's going to be fine because <laughs> I, I knew where to turn this off, but look, it, uh, it, it, uh, this, uh, um, if this is the only time, oh, wait, 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 this disappeared. Uh, system preference, yeah. yeah, see my system preferences is like frozen. I have the rainbow oh. of death here, spinning rainbow of death. So I'm just gonna oh. force quit out of that, not worry about it. Um, and uh, you can change it in the control center, I know, but look, the control center button is missing. It's disappeared. Control center, okay. Yeah, Elgato, okay. So I'm gonna, uh, if everybody, if anybody has trouble seeing what's on the screen, let me know, I think we're fine. All right, so um, I have put in the, the pin comment in the chat, and I should have done this for the tiny URL link from earlier, is a link to this particular P5 sketch. So again, um, you know, I, I, whoops, whoa, look at what's just like, things are just appearing like out of nowhere. I wonder if I should restart my computer. Well, Look at so that. It, 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 it's, uh, that's interesting. I mean, if, if you wanted to handle that, I can always, uh, I, I'm, I'm engaging in the chat right oh. now. Uh, if anyone wants to jump in and if you want to handle that okay. business, I can, uh, I can, yeah. I can, uh, I can, uh, I can talk about this sort of thing. I mean, I'm going to restart. It, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask you one of the questions that came up, yeah. um, which I was kind of curious about. Somebody asked like whether you could use PID to like land a rocket, like a SpaceX rocket. And I was actually curious. I don't know. You know, I've been following the James Webb telescope uh, with all yes. the images that have been coming out. And I know there was so much that went into the design and engineering and production of the telescope, you know, and the fear of sort of like any little like slight angle of a mirror setting. Do you know to what extent does 
um, the work that you do in robotics research uh, apply to um, these kinds of mechanics that happen in space, I guess is what I'm asking. So, so, so yeah, I mean, I, the, I, I am interested. So the, the short answer is like, like uh, I mean, reliability of controllers in space is super important. And the uh, and I, I need to be more up on what is actually being used on some of these particular spacecraft. But it, but some of the landing a rocket, um, I mean, you look at how that uh, like if you if you watch like a SpaceX uh, self landing landing rocket, you could almost see the PID in action. That uh, now it, it, under the hood, we don't know ex exactly what's what's being used necessarily. Uh, but 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 a lot of different control techniques, even if they're not explicitly. PID, they end up acting like PID. They'll, they'll, they, if you need that, like, well, I need to be slowed down. They'll start applying a force in the opposite direction. I was seeing in the chat, uh, there's something called MPC, which is like, what's called, called model predictive control. Uh, but what MPC is, is it's basically more or less acting like PID, except it's able to reason about the fact that you might have limits on how hard you can push. Uh, you know, if in, on our PID controller, if you had a limit on how much force you could push, it would try to ask for things beyond that limit. Now, and it might not be able to deliver, and it'll, you know, so it'll do the best it can. However, there are methods that will understand that I am limited how much force I can do, and, what that, and that's going to require me to think ahead and push more later because I have to push less now, for instance. So even if PID isn't used directly in all these cases, the core principles of it are often present. And I would not be shocked at all if that if in, in these space thing in in, in these um, in these space settings uh, that that you need to that uh, that they will be using PID to orient different um, uh, different elements of the of the spacecraft. Um, but they, they also one thing that they also want to be careful about is. Um, uh, if, if something fails on the spacecraft, that it still works. So if you if you can, one thing that a PID controller requires is that you have sensing, that you can sense that what your angle is. And I guess what happens if that sensor is is gone? Right. That sensor is gone. Like, well, is the whole spacecraft down? So a lot a lot of the very bright mechanical engineering things is that they'll they'll try to make this sort of idiot proof. That even if the sensor is gone, you just have to apply a torque, and then it'll go against the hard stop. That way, you don't have to have a sensor; yeah, right. it just deploys, right? So one, one, one. So if you can, so things, and this is not just PID control. This is any form of what we call feedback control, where you're getting feedback from sensors, you're getting information from the sensors, uh, has that component and inherently adds at least a little bit of complexity. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And and look. In that, thank you for uh, <laughs> talking through that in that beautiful amount of time of restart of the hey. computer. The uh, the menu bar thing is looks correct, and I no longer have that slight tinge to the hue of the screen. So we're back and ready to go. So uh, I also just wanted to, I, I'm going to jump back into that matter.js sketch, but I just wanted to show here um, that this is the seek example I was referring to, which is this simulation of this steering vehicle that is attempting to seek this target, which is a red dot. And little did I know really all along that ultimately this um, uh, seek function is essentially, uh, which is what I've covered like in great detail in many videos, is this is the error, right? Um, I am looking to find the difference between the target's position and my position um, and creating a force out of that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, scaling that force according to this max force variable, which is much like the gain yeah. in the PIP controller, and then applying that force. So we're going to do something similar, but I'm going to switch over to using matter.js and looking at the cart pole uh, kind of scenario. Okay, so let me stop this. So if anyone you know uh, is interested in that, you know, hit me up after. I'm sure just through some nice online searches, you can find the Nature of Code book and the Nature of Code videos and all of that. But if you're interested in going down that road um, and you can't find 
find it, uh, let me know in the comments or you know in the chat, and I'll, I'll I'll be able to answer that later. Okay, so let's take a look. I've um, I've started. I put a little sketch together at first, just so we didn't have to. You know, I uh, in a lot of my video tutorials, I always like to try to show the entire process of coding something, but I wanted to at least have a, a foundation to start with to try to save a little bit of time here. Um, let me show you probably the most important piece of this, which is that, um, and I'm actually not using all of these. So I'm going to take these out now just to simplify. Um, whoops, uh, maybe I uh, was using one of those and I didn't realize it, but let's, I'll just leave that in there right now and I'll figure out. But the important part that I wanted to show you is you, uh, I'm importing both the P5 library here as well as the matter.js library there through these CDNs or content delivery mm -hmm. networks where the JavaScript libraries are hosted online. So, um, you know, this, there's, this is, uh, uh, merits a longer discussion in terms of how you build all the components of a web page. But the P5 web editor, for the most part, will really help you along. The only thing you need to add if you were starting from scratch with the P5 web editor is this link to the matter.js library. And hopefully folks in the chat can help answer questions about that if you're struggling with that. Oh, I need matter helper. That's right. I just can take these out. Okay. So um, I'm just, I, I, I was simplifying this sketch and I left a couple things in here. That, uh, that I'm going to take out now from a previous example. Okay, so let's. Um, so one thing I'll also note is that there's this JavaScript file called Matter Helper that I made. It's a little bit silly, but anytime I want to refer to something in the Matter Physics world, I have to access it via the Matter namespace like matter.engine, matter.render, matter.world. And so I made all these little aliases to each one with just the single word engine or vector or constraint or body. Um, and I'll talk through what each of these are as we start to build the code example itself. But this just allows me in the code as I go back to here to say things like create an engine as opposed to matter.engine.create. Least important detail of today, but a little helpful thing. Okay, so let's look at what's happening. So this is the setup function, and and I mean, I, you know, I actually made the font a little bit smaller than I usually do because some of this code is kind of long. Let me see if I can up it just one couple points. So let me know if you, anybody has any trouble reading the font. Um, but so the only variables I'm starting with right now is I have an engine. That's the physics engine that's going to handle that Euler integration and all of the figuring out where the bodies move and how they move for us. I need to also store in a variable the world associated with that engine. The world is basically like a variable holding on to a big list of everything that exists in the world that we've created. So you could have multiple worlds and do all sorts of interesting things, but we just have one world. And then anytime I want to make something in the world, I need to create it as a shape. It has to have some geometry. I don't know what these weird underlines are showing up now, too. There we go. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to ignore that, all the weird extra things that are happening today. So I want to make, for the ground, you can see I'm drawing it there, this rectangle. And you know this will be very familiar to any of you who use P5 regularly. But um, for Christian watching or anybody else who comes from maybe a more a world of sort of more true mathematics, <laughs> this canvas that you're seeing on the right here, it is a Cartesian plane. But it's a very odd one. First of all, it's, it's very typical of computer graphics, but odd in the sort of mathematical sense. Zero, zero is up here in the top left, not in the middle. And the y-axis is pointing down in the positive direction. So that's quite standard for computer graphics, but odd if, if I were doing like a lesson about uh, you know, a pendulum, we would draw a Cartesian plane and point y and up and have zero, zero in the middle. But so that's where this rectangle, it's positioned at 200 is the x. 295 is the y, very arbitrary number. It's about there um, because I want it to be the ground to be the full width of the window, the canvas, and have a height of 10. I gave it a little friction. Restitution is a variable that refers to uh, the sort of bounciness of it, the elasticity of it, if you will. Um, and then I'm saying it's static. It's a sort of something, it's like, a, a, like an object of infinite mass that can never be moved. So that's the ground, and that's where we're going to put the cart. Um, I also just added a couple variables to this ground body so I could store. I don't, there might be a way to access them through matter. If, if anybody knows, feel free to like let me know in the, in the chat. But I just put the width of it in a variable called w and the height in 10 because what I'm doing here in the draw loop, the draw is that same animation loop that Christian had in the Python code, that for loop. But here with P5, because we have a, you know, an animation program that's showing us every frame, draw shows us each and every frame. So every frame, we want to update the physics engine and draw the ground. 
at its X position, its Y position, with its width and height. So let's look at just adding a cart to the system. Yeah. Any, uh, and, and, and Christian, you should absolutely stop me if you have a question or if you notice a question from the chat. I'm not keeping us close an eye on it. So let's add a cart. And I'm going to do the same thing. Cart equals bodies dot rectangle. Let's put it in the middle. Let's put it, uh, so I'm gonna do a little like mental <laughs> mental arithmetic, which is, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. It's really hard to do when you're suddenly like live broadcasting. You know, you're sitting yeah, at home, it's, it's drinking your tea, 295 <laughs> plus five equals 300. That's like, you know, I'd do that. You know, you could tie all my hands behind my back and, you know, tape, tape over my eyes. I don't know, I could do that. But all of a sudden here, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank. But let's put it at, um, let's put it at 290. Uh, so five mm -hmm. pixels up from the ground, and then we'll give it a width of about 20 and a height of about 10. And then I need to also set these, all of these parameters. So I am going to, um, and I'll just sort of like, uh, I've got a little syntax error here, which I'm missing a comma. I am going to, I'm going to, you know, maybe we'll turn the friction off at some point, but we'll leave it for now. Just sort of base friction, base restitution, angle of zero. This is very important though, false is static because this is not a static object. We want this to move. It would, and in fact, maybe just for the sake of argument right now, let's give its Y value 250 because if everything is working, it should fall. Now, two things, we don't see it on, we don't see it on screen. There's two things I'm missing. You can think about what am I missing right now? <laughs> I'm gonna go. The first thing is I can make a body, but it's not actually part of the physics unless I add it to the world. So let's do world add and add this cart. Oops, no, no. I add to the world the cart. But we also don't see it because, and matter.js, I believe, has some functions that will sort of draw things automatically to you. But again, the sort of ethos of the coding train is I'm demonstrating sort of algorithms and behaviors, and you, the artists of the world and programmers, will uh, put your own creative twist on this. So I think it's sort of good practice for me to always be additionally drawing the elements myself. So let's draw it with a nice, um, we'll, we'll use the coding train colors. Um, so I have this little uh, website, which has a bunch of colors. We'll pick, and maybe I could, uh, let's pick this nice blue. Um, and we'll set that, oops, we'll set that to be a fill. And I, by the way, I totally forgot to duplicate the sketch. So if you go to that link at any point, apologies for this, it's actually going to be where, where I am with the code now. Why don't I duplicate it now? Um, that way, this is the sort of new base code if somebody wanted to actually start along. So I'm gonna do, uh, um, I'll just call this, I'll, I'll rename all these to something more that makes more sense later and link them in the description. Okay. Um, so let's add a fill of that color. Let's put a rectangle at, now what is it? It's the cart position. This is very long-winded. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't, if, you, if you've been paying, if you're like a, 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 a person who's seen every coding train video ever, you would know that I usually often take these matter.js objects and wrap them inside my own class, my own objects, to be able to have more control and authorship over them and kind of keep the code a little bit more concise. But I think for today's demonstration, it's simpler just to use it directly. So we're gonna draw it at the Y, and I'm, this is a my little weird hack where I'm gonna give it a, a width of 20 and a height, this is, sort of bad practice in that I have these kind of redundant variables. And if I update one and forget to update the other one, it's going to cause problems later. But you know, we'll refactor this later. Maybe I'll look into how matter works a better way to, I know it gives you the vertices of the geometry, so I could sort of pull that dynamically, but now we can just say cart w cart uh, dot h. And let's run this and we can see, there we go. So we can see the world, things are working because as soon as I run the sketch and I'm, um, the, the cart is falling. So uh, we could always have it fall, but let's position it. And it's so small. Let's um, let's make things a little bit bigger. Um, and we'll see what I mean. I have to now <laughs> change everything everywhere in its position so that it's, uh, you know, actually falling, it will actually settle in the right place. <laughs> let's put it at, what I know I've lost track of the ground is like 10 pixels from the bottom. This is 20 pixels high. So I think the bottom is at, so height minus 20, which would be like 290. That should give us a good plot. All right, anyway, and it's gonna adjust itself because matter is like smart being like, no, no, these two things can't physically be in the same space. Let's push them apart. Okay, 
Uh, cart.h. Did I forget that somewhere? Somebody's saying in the chat. No, it looks like I'm good. Okay. So, great. So we've got cart poll. I mean, not, no, no poll. We have cart. <laughs> we have so, cart. Cart. We just have cart. We're, we're maybe going to get to cart poll. We'll see. I had, by the way, the planned amount of time for this stream was till 1 p.m., which is about 15 minutes from now. Do you have a time that you have to go by just so I can keep that in my head? Okay. I, I don't no, want to. Like, I, I, uh, I, I always. As long as yeah. tri I'll grab a drink of water if that's all right. Yes. Yeah, so right yeah, you can. You're, you can go have a little break to yourself at any point. I can actually also uh, remove you. Um, but if. You, oh, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, but, yeah. Just bring me back in a minute. I'll just. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll love, as long as you're okay, be jumping in yep. and, and talking yep. about the controller. That's cool. I'll just Perfect. I grab, grab my, my water bottle. Uh, okay, you are off. Uh, Christian, you might be able to hear me, but your audio and video is no longer on stream. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so Johnny is making a good comment, which is maybe we should start the wrapping into classes sooner rather than later. I would agree with that. Really, I mean, I think that's a like, very good point. I think I'm just going to hold off because I, ultimately I think I might come back and record, do this again as more of a coding challenge video, and I might think more about, it, might do it without matter. But let's 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 keep going here. So I'm going to now add a force. So we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it force. I think the proper way to do this. Let's let me just show you how I figure out how to do this stuff. If I go into the documentation here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. And I go under uh, vector. And I think, Christian, hopefully I can still hear you. So when you're back, just talk into my ear. Or I'll just check in a bit. Um, <clears throat> so um, basically, I want to create the force as a vector. So I can use matter.vector.create, or in my case, just vector.create. And let's go back to here. Vector.create, and let's make a force. Now, again, what are the units of measurement? <laughs> uh, the units of measurement are pixels. And we're going to have to just make our best guesses as to what makes sense. Uh, uh, you know, I've talked about this before when using, like, and I'm going to bring Christian back here. Um, let me just press this button. Great. I've talked about like the physics engine Box 2D, which is uh, was famously used for uh, you know it's probably still used, but at least for early kind of casual physics games like Angry Birds, um, and that is a physics engine where the units of measurement are real world. They're meters, they're seconds, and then you have to do all the conversion before you draw them into pixels. I like I actually like an engine like Matter because of the simplicity that I can just my unit measurement is pixels. So again, we have some issues in terms of real, you know, simulating true physical reality. But, you know, again, this is only a 2D world, so that's not even a real thing yeah. anyway, although I, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting off track. So let's make a, a, a vector that just uh, one, zero. And actually, what I'm going to do is let's see if we can control these force, control the cart just to get started through key presses. So I'm going to add a key pressed function. I'm going to check if the key code is right arrow, and these are all built-in variables to P5 that let me build in interactivity really quickly. Um, you know, I could put buttons on the screen and do other things. I'm going to create this force, and then I'm going to say, and I now I don't remember how to do this, so I think it's under uh, 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 body. Let's take a look. Uh, I think there's a body apply force function. Yeah, so I need to apply the force to a particular button. So the force is the vector I'm applying. That'll eventually be the force we calculate through PID or just or PI, PD. I don't know. That, I don't know that we're going to get to the I here in the JavaScript version. Um, the position uh, is interesting because uh, while in a lot of my examples, I just con consider all objects like a single point <laughs> mass. So it's like there's no geometry. We can actually apply a force to like the top left edge of the cart or the bottom right edge. But I'm just going to apply the, the force to the center of the body and then the body. So I can go now into the code and I can say, whoops. Um, every time I say whoops now, I have this like, I can't help but stop for a moment and then imagine, because I have, I don't know, if you probably haven't seen these, uh, Christian, but I have these like super cuts of me saying whoops over and over again with all these different videos. I, I, I make a lot of mistakes and I say whoops all the time. Okay, where am I? I'm in the I, wrong I, pray, I pray no one does that for me. That'll be, that'll be too long of a video. Uh, okay, so force, then we're going to say a body dot apply force. We're going to apply it to the cart. We're going to apply it just to the cart's position. So the center of the cart, and I'm going to apply this force. 
So I'm assuming if all goes well, and I'll also just note, I have this auto refresh on, which is a little bit risky <laughs> because if you, yes, if you write, if you're writing a for loop and you have auto refresh on and you don't get the exit condition in there, sometimes your code is going to restart and then get stuck in an infinite loop. But it allows the sketch to like continually update as I'm editing the code, which has a lot of convenience for it. So let's, let's see what happens. Whoa, that was kind of a big force. <laughs> so we know that the, the, the uh, values we want are, should be much smaller. So let's try a, a smaller number. There we go. We can see I'm kind of like pushing it along here. Now it's kind of like jumping up into the air. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. There, there probably is a way that I, you know, there are constraints. I'm going to use a constraint if we get to the pendulum. Um, but there are all sorts of ways that I could think about it more as like it's got wheels, it's locked to a track. What's the friction? What's the grab? But I'm going to let this be a very raw and sort of just whatever kind of matter does by default. Um, now that we see this is working, let's make the force a bit stronger. And let's also uh, just add in a force for the left arrow. Obviously, there's a lot more sophisticated ways we could do this, but just hard coding in a negative force. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him. Maybe I'm, it's like it's a flying car. Like I, 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 We've got SpaceX going on here just with like a little uh, horizontal force. I wonder what the liftoff is from. Uh, it's interesting that that is uh, uh, sort of occurring. And let's, so anyway, I'm going to stop worrying about uh, tuning this because we're not really there yet. So the idea now is that what I want uh, is to have, to, if I'm recreating and stop me if I've got this wrong, um, uh, what I want to do is say, like, I want to have a controller move the cart to a desired X location. So let's say, uh, my desired X, and I'm just going to call it desired for short, because I'm not going to use a Y in this case, uh, uh, is um, 250. Okay? So now the next thing we need to do is calculate the error, which would be the desired minus the cart's actual position. Am I getting this right so far? <laughs> okay. Perfect so far. D -A. Now we need... Now we a. need a gain. Now we need a gain, right? So yep. let's just try a gain. Let's just start with a value of one, because right? I have no idea what it should be. Yeah. And then the idea here is that I'm going to create this force now, not with keyboard control, but with my P controller. So this is the P controller. I have the desired position in, in one dimension. I have, which it could be a vector, that's, I assume, correct, right? A, a, a two-dimensional vector, that is, a three-dimensional vector. I, I look forward to seeing all the uh, posts of people doing this in Unity or 3JS, hopefully, uh, that you'll share back with me. Um, I have the gain, and then the force is just going to be, and I'm going to just make a variable called uh, fx, which I'll say is the gain times the error. And then I'll create an actual vector. Again, I'm oversimplifying here to just eliminate having to deal with any vector math or the y. But how's this looking so far? Looking great so far. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, you got me in perfect time. I mean, drink my water, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it is then, it's, it's perfect. This is, yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to apply that force. So I'm, uh, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I like to do is I often just turn the engine off. So, okay. So, ah, I see why it's jumping up in the air. These are the acts. Oh. My, see, my, my, my little bit of arithmetic was yeah. off. So let's move this Hold up. up uh, just, I just wanted to start uh, more at the, uh, there we go, at the proper spot uh, on top of the ground. So now that the engine is off, so no physics are being applied. And as soon as I uh, turn the engine on by uncommenting this line, it's gone. So this gain is clearly much too high. Uh, let's give it a lower gain. And we can see we've got this unstable oscillating behavior. That's what you would expect, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, so the, the gain is currently 0.01. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. It's probably because uh, I imagine pixels is a very tiny unit. Yes. And uh, so, so as a result, it's not meters. It's like there's probably a ton of pixels during uh, uh, right. uh, on that thing. So that makes sense. So, so people have to consider what the units are of their gains, it's like force per unit distance for the P gain and distances in pixels. And I'm guessing when you get the velocity, it's going to be pixels per second. Right. Uh, is where we're going to get. So right. yeah, anyway, that's perfect. 
It's, I'm kind of fascinated by this levitating behavior we've got. Again, even though I'm choosing to ignore the Y value in terms of this, this world, this physics world is not a one dimensional physics world. And again, if I were doing this more with my own custom baked physics engine, I would have more control over simplifying it. But I'm curious to see where we get with matter. So we'll, I think we'll just have fun with this extra Y that's happening right now. I probably could increase the, um, the gravi gravity. Like uh, yeah. matter, let's just look. I'm just curious if we want it just so we have the matter.js world gravity. Um, so I assume there is, a, oh, world gravity has been moved to engine gravity. So engine uh, gravity, is that something that I can just set directly? Or do I need to call a function that's like, oh, there's a scale factor. So this probably, mm. it's probably internally got this sort of like, scaling that it does between what would be real world measurements and pixels in some way. Um, okay. Although this is the scale for just the gravity, so I'm not sure. Um, uh, I'd have to do a deeper dive into the ins and outs of this physics engine. Is there like a mm -hmm. set set gravity? No, so let's just try hard. I'm just curious. Let's just try hard coding it. Um, let's go to uh, engine gravity dot y equals like negative 10. Like what just happens? Yeah, see, okay. So I made a gravity in the inverse direction. I Here's the gravity pointing down. Um, right, so with like stronger gravity, whatever sort of weird anomaly that caused it to uh, lift up into the air is not really happening as much. But I'm gonna let it stick with the default, but if we need to play with that later, we can. Okay. <laughs> levitating. Actually, maybe let's let's keep the gravity a little bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. it looks a little bit more realistic. And, and actually, actually really, we'll, we'll really know when we look at the pendulum as well. That's, right, if we get right. the pendulum, that'll be pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> right. The pendulum is going to have to deal with the gravity a lot more. The other thing is, I think I should turn the friction to zero, because right now the friction is probably playing a fairly large role in how it's able to slow down and stop at the proper location. You can see now, uh, and in fact, the restitution that might be how it's levitating into the air because I have each of these as slightly, and I want to, I don't know if, um, you know, they're, they're not, uh, that there's a little bit of bounce between them, elasticity there. So I think actually by setting the friction to zero, the restitution to zero, we have a much more idealized scenario here. Oh, I'm, I'm liking this. Okay. So am I right in that if, um, let's turn the gain up a tiny bit. Um, and actually, because we're in an interactive place, let's just go for it right now and immediately attach a slider to the gain so that we can demonstrate like we're already leaps and bounds ahead, not in terms of the the math and uh, 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 you know accuracy of the simulation and the ability to code the simulation than the Python version, but we're leaps ahead in terms of being able to, to run it in real time. So let's uh, even just by changing a variable and having it run, but let's create a gain and I guess I'll call this p gain slider in case we end up making a bunch of these. So I'm gonna make a P gain slider. And again, P5 has all these nice hooks to doing this very default interaction, um, GUI interactions. Uh, you know, any of you who are CSS wizards and have done a lot of web development, you might be have ideas about a much more thoughtfully designed an interface, and I would welcome those. But for right now, I can just make a slider. I need to give it, uh, uh, th uh, three different values. The starting value, which um, let's make the gain zero just to start, and the minimum and the maximum. And then actually, I do also need a fourth value because the default step is a unit of one. So if I want to be able to slide between zero and 0.1, <laughs> I need a smaller unit of measurement. So let's do 0 0.01. And this should allow me to now, uh, uh, come on, if I, could, if I could figure out how to use a mass, mouse, what, what, what is going, you know, I must have made some weird mistake in the, uh, the order of these parameters. Create, create slider P5. Let's look. Uh, <clears throat> minimum, maximum, ah, minimum, maximum, then the value, then the step. Got it. <laughs> so I did make a mistake. Minimum, maximum, start at zero, then the step. There, now I can use this slider, and all we need to do is have this be p gain slider dot value. So when we start, there's no gain. I can ramp up the gain. It's way too high. Um, let's this. Let's give the. Let's. I think that's too high of a maximum value. Um, 
Let's try this. I've never, I don't usually work with such small numbers in sliders. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's, yeah, there we go. So we can see it's way too big. I, uh, I need a, like a reset so you, button to put it back. I was just go gonna ahead. say, I was just gonna say a reset button would, would, would really help you here, especially when we get to the uh, cart poll. Right. It's, Great, let's, to... let's add that in. Let's add a, um, actually I don't need to have a global variable for it because we'll just do it this way. Create button, reset, uh, mouse pressed. So what I'm doing is, and it's going to add a button. Whoops, what did I? Oh, uh, mouse pressed function. I've forgotten how to use JavaScript. Okay. Uh, great. So you can see now uh, quickly, um, and I'll zoom in here just to make it a little bigger. There's a reset button. Anytime I click this button, whatever code is inside this anonymous function that's inside the mouse pressed event will execute. So uh, I suppose right, this is a little bit of a weird way of doing it, but let's actually just, uh, let's write actually a function called re, um, reset cart. I'm actually just gonna we'll put it in a separate function and then I'll call reset cart just by making a new cart. <laughs> I could probably go in and set the velocity to zero and set its position back, but I think it would be easier just to recreate the cart. You know, I can always just rerun the sketch, but it's nice to have a reset button. And then I can just say right here, whoops, um, reset cart whenever I also press that button. So if I make this big, reset cart. Oh, interesting. Now why, what did I do that caused it to no longer apply? This I'm, I'm at, at the moment I'm stumped here. Like I recreate the, oh, you know what it is? Adding the, oh, adding the, oh, so this is actually, a, I've done a terrible thing. I can't do this. This is how I usually do things, but I would have to remove the cart. Let's see. Maybe it's as easy as doing this. Remove the old cart. Make a new cart. Uh, let's see. We'll have to look into. Um, uh, we'll have to look into the world object. I don't want to get too off here on a tangent, but here, add. Um, world has an add. Oh, uh, usage should be migrated to the matter.composite. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so uh, is there a remove? Composite.remove. Interesting. Um, let's do it a different way. <laughs> I'm going to invest. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, 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 reset. Let's just see. Reset cart. Mouse press reset cart. Um, let's just see. Matter.composite. Oh, if, if the card exists, you'll have to bear with me for a second as I try to sort this out. Um, and then let's see, uh, let's, let's go, I guess it's changed to matter.composite.add. Okay, so let's see. And then reset. Yeah, okay. So, and I might as well also reset the slider. Uh, P gain slider dot value, I'll reset the slider to zero. So anyway, that was a lot of, oh, uh, and I need to make sure this happens after I've made the slider. Okay, so that was a lot of extra. <laughs> the one thing about adding interactivity is we easily, it's so easy to, to lose our way from the actual simulation that we're trying to focus on because there's so many little extra edge cases and things that come up with the interactivity, but that's what we're here for. So we'll go with it. So I'm gonna um, add a little bit of gain if I hit reset, it sets everything back to zero. And I think this, I think maybe um, we'll leave the maximum gain a little bit lower so we can see. Uh, all right, great. All right, so we now have a P controller moving the cart to a desired location. Now I want to add the D or so here's the question. Here's one question. The force, so th this is where, I guess I'm still going to, uh, if I'm following um, the earlier Python code, what I'm doing is I'm adding the, you know, let's just hit stop here so we don't get errors. This is the D, you know, this is like a comment here, like a, not a real thing, D control 
I'm going to add that here. So yes. I can leave it as one force I, uh, and then apply that same force the same way. It's just a matter of adding that. And so yes. in order to do that, I need to look at the cart's velocity. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. So let's look at... Um, so first thing first, I uh, and you know I haven't used Matter.js other than a few tests yesterday in probably a couple of years. So and I didn't go this. This is as far as I got basically in the tests. So we'll see how how this goes now uh, and how far we get. Okay. So I need to get. I'm just going to call it v the cart's uh, velocity. Uh, let's console log that and see if that shows up. Great. So we can see here that I'm getting the cart's velocity. Now, there is this like, you know, a tiny infinitesimal y velocity, which I will choose to ignore. I just want the x component of that cart's velocity. Um, okay. And this actually often occurs in JavaScript. One of the pitfalls of JavaScript is the way that it rounds floating point numbers is a, has really odd behavior. So, you know, you can add three. 0 0.0 plus 3.1 of 3.0 plus 0 0.1 and get the number 3.1000000000679321 like all sorts of weird stuff can happen in javascript because you know we're not we don't this code is not going to help us land the spacex rocket it's just for us to simulate in the browser to get the idea of it going so we can live with those kind of errors okay um, so now i need a um, <clears throat> You're going to have to talk me through this a little bit here, Christian. I know that I need yep. a, um, we'll call this the P gain. Now I need a D gain. That's right. Uh, which you had said something like 10% of what your gain usually is. Is that right? Yeah, I go, I go, I go for 20% 20 for 20 generally. Okay. So I'll go 50 so, for you. So, yeah. So oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 sorry. That's not a gain. Yeah, 50. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so point two, point two. I will make this its own value, but just to have something in there, let's start with it uh, as half whatever the P gain is. And then the, the L, and I've, now I'm blanking here because the elements that I want to multiply together in the equation, help me with this part here. So, you, so it's be first is your D gain that you just mm -hmm. defined. They're going to want to multiply it by the derivative of your error, which is going to be negative velocity. And and just in the x direction in this case. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm like, no, it can't be that easy, <laughs> right? The derivative of the error <laughs> is the velocity is the is the negative of the velocity, right? Because velocity. We're talking about derivative as a way of describing the change. The change yes. in a position is the velocity. Incidentally, the yep. change in a velocity is the acceleration. And force yes. equals mass times acceleration. This is where all that Euler integration stuff comes together beautifully. OK, here we go. Uh, oh, yeah, I got to turn up the game, I'm afraid. Look at that. That is fantastic. That's a PE yep. controller. We did it. <laughs> See you all tomorrow. <laughs> okay, no, no, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> uh, but that's great. So let's um, let's give the controller just so as it continues to rerun itself. Let's give it a default. Um, oh, okay. So actually, let's maybe we should. What do you think is a good next step? Should we leave the um, d gain as a ratio uh, uh, as calculated from the p gain, or should we give it our own control over that? I, I'd say it'd be very informative to put a slider on there because then you can okay, see, great. you can do the reset. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that behaves. Okay, so let's do a D gain slider. Let's add that. Now, I'm not going to add any labels to the slider, so we're just going to have to remember which one's which. Uh, I would really, one of the things that maybe we'll, I'll do after, after we're done today, which is I'll put this in a GitHub repository and accept pull requests for people to help improve the interface and add things to it. I don't know if you saw this. Um, I'm, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but um, uh, I just want to show you like a wonder, an, an amazing example of this is, uh, let me just go, let me go. Uh, Sorry for the slight digression, but um, I'll sh I just want to I want to show everybody what's possible. So I'm going to go to one of my recent videos about horizontal directional drilling, and this was a really uh, basic simulation of 
uh, how horizontal directional dr dr drilling works with like changing the bias of this particular kind of drill uh, and turning it. And what this was the basic simple code example from the video. And then if I go here to the expanded game, which the viewers contributed to, um, and I try it here, you'll see like, this is what it looks like now. <laughs> it has like this animated uh, drill. Uh, it has like these, it has this, uh, you know, these obstacles that are hidden, but you sort of get these clues. It has a goal, you get a score. So we don't need to go down the road, but, but I just want to encourage people who are interested, anybody who helped with this, if you want to help augment whatever simulation we do here, um, I would welcome, I'll put this all up afterwards. Uh, okay, so now I need to get back to where I was. So let's think about this. The, the D gain slider will have a default starting value of zero. Its range, let's have its range go to half. We can actually just make it the same because we can, uh, uh, let's just make them the same for right now. So we don't, we, we, we'll, we'll see what the gains are by their literal position along the slider. And then we will do this, um, D gain, um, <clears throat> Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. P. This is D gain slider. I have a lot of redundant variables here, but I think it helps us follow what's going on. The value of that slider, and then right this ah. So now what we can see here is this is with the P gain on, and as I turn mm -hmm. up the D gain, it's like this dampening or damping. I can never get that right. Do you have a nice way of remembering the correct terminology of damping versus dampening? One of those is making well, something I, wet. Yeah, yeah <laughs> damp, they... dampening is the wet thing. Uh, okay. yeah, I, I, uh, you know, you, know you, you dampen a cloth, you know, it, you know it's damp. <laughs> it, 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 but, but the problem is because something's damp in the rain, so right. uh, people think damping. So it, it's, yeah, it, dampening <laughs> is the, uh, is the. I got to come up with a great mnemonic device for you. Yeah. But until next yeah. time. Until next time, <laughs> yeah, I'm always getting that wrong. It's like the other thing that I always get wrong is modulo versus modulus. Modulo is the oh. operator. The modulus yeah. is the result of the, you know, of the, you know, this value modulo, this other value. Anyway, I'm, I'm off topic. Okay, so I think we're in good shape here. Um, let's add just, um, let's give these some default values that we can sort of see stuff happening as I'm, um, Whoops, no, not, not point, um, let's do point zero 0.05, zero 0.025. So every time the sketch re, ooh, no, wait. Oh, again, this is, I, I have the order of this wrong. I can't seem to remember that. This is point zero zero 0.005 and then point zero zero 0.0025. Wait, did that work? Uh, oh, wait, D gain slider. What have I got wrong here? Uh, P gain, why is the P gain slider? Not? Oh, because of the reset. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is this is a very awkward thing that I've done that I'm just gonna uh, uh, live with. So this actually, okay, great. Okay, so I just wanted to, every time I change anything in the code, it's gonna automatically start and resettle it. Uh, uh, okay, min, max, and, oh, right. <laughs> you think maybe I should have a variable for the default value? That would make sense, but this is fine. I want to add the pendulum, the, the pole, if you will. So the way that I'm going to do this is by first creating a circular body. So I'm gonna call this the bob, as in the thing that's hanging on the end of the pendulum. So let's have a variable for bob. We're going to create, and I suppose this should go in the reset. I've really uh, locked myself into a corner here with this, but let's not worry about it right now. Uh, you know, but maybe I won't use the reset button uh, much. That's something I can sort of refactor later because there's so many things now that need, might, are going to start to need to be reset. Um, so the bob is a body creates um, body circle. I think it's um, bodies dot circle, and then I give it an x and a y. So let's have it be at the. Um, I want it to be at the cart location, but that's I, I'll, let's see. <laughs> You know what? Let's put it in reset and realize we're going to have to fix this later. So since this is kind of our like build world function now. So I'm going to create the bob um, because I want it to be directly above the cart. So I'm going to say the cart position dot X. And then I will just use, you know, 100 pixels. I'll actually, this is kind of 
silly, but let's say y minus 100, because let's have a variable for like the rest length of this, what's going to be the pendulum. It's, I mean, I'm thinking of it as a spring. It's ultimately, I'm making a like idealized, fully rigid spring. That's what the pendulum arm is. So that's why I'm using the rest length term. And then what else do I need? Uh, we need an X. Oh, well, we need an R. Let's have it be um, 10. And then uh, I need all the options, these same options, which I probably could just, um, again, I will refactor this later, <laughs> but this is the Bob now. It is a Bob that exists at the cart's position, but a hundred pixels higher. Um, and it is not static. And I need to say matter dot composite dot add to the world, the Bob. Let's also just store that radius value. Again, kind of silly that I'm doing this. Let's just store it in a variable attached to the object. So now I can draw, this is drawing the cart. And I think I have more room here that I can put this here, right? Make my code a little bit wider. I think you could, I'm slightly, and if I stand over here, okay, my setup's a little bit better now. Um, drawing the cart. Now let's draw the bob. We'll get a different color. Oh, I closed it, but that's fine. We don't really, the color is the sort of, is not the important detail here. Uh, and the, it is a circle, which is at the bob's position. And oh, why did it fall through the ground? That is strange. Um, we're gonna have to figure that out. Bob dot R times two. Okay. What did I miss? Oh, did I not add it to the world? No, I added it to the world. Did I not add the ground to the world? Oh, you know what it is? I wonder if, All right, uh, let's go back to, I'm just curious, because the, uh, okay, let's, uh, this is, I'm just gonna go back to my old fashioned world.add and we'll see. What am I missing here? Let's give it a little restitution and friction. This is strange. I'm trying to think of, I'm gonna look at the chat. You forgot to remove the Bob after resetting. No, I'm, all right. I'm gonna take out this idea of the reset button right now and take this out. So this is just creating the world. Let's take a look at this. We are, we make the rectangle bodies.circle all right, I'm gonna to go to my code from looking at the chat. I think the gravity is so high that the Euler integration is starting to mess up. I have seen this. It's, I, I probably need to change the time step. Let's change the gravity. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that was Simon, a great comment in the chat. So this is something that I, we have seen when I write my own physics engines, that if, uh, and in Christian's Python code, there was a variable called DT which controlled the time step. And you can imagine like if this desk here, right, I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. If this is the ground and this little Elgato HDMI capture thing is the Bob, if I were to drop it, right, it's really falling continuously through air. But our simulation is doing this, calculate a time step and then teleport it to here, then teleport it to here. And so if those time steps are really big, boom, it's gonna like skip past the ground. It will never actually make contact because it's able to leap over it. And there are all sorts of ways in programming physics engines. Box2D is a very sophisticated methodology for this. Um, I think there's probably a way for me to alter the time step, but I'm actually just, right now, I'm just gonna leave the gravity by default and we've got it working. Okay, looking at chat. Okay, the gravity, the gravity. All right, so, but now we've got that working uh, and I, I made some unnecessary changes trying to debug that, but I'll just leave it as is. The next thing we need to do is create a constraint. So let's go to the Matter website. The constraint, by the, so if you go to um, the homepage of matter.js, 
Um, let's just see. Uh, see these demos? Like, we have this Newton's Cradle. We have this, like, this double pendulum right here. Anything, we have these springy things. Whenever two bodies are attached to each other via a spring, however uh, springy it is, <laughs> um, Oh, well, look at all these wonderful examples. Uh, that's called a constraint. So I'm going to look at the documentation under uh, constraint. And uh, basically, I want to create a constraint with a set of options. And uh, let's do that here. So I'm going to do this in my, um, I'm just going to now call this create world, this function. And I probably should put the ground in it too, but we, we can fix that later. Let's uh, add a constraint. And again, after the stream today, I will go through and kind of comment all of the code so that the released version has more ex explanations in it. And you know, I'll do some cleanup as well. Um, so we need to say um, constraint. I already forgot. Create. Constraint.create. Where is that? Uh, create. Create. And then I believe we give it a set of, of options. So now I think it's, I'm just assuming it's giving me an error because let's, let's turn off auto refresh for a second. Now, uh, body A, I believe the first thing you do with a constraint is you say which two bodies are attached. So body A is the cart and body B is the bob. And somewhere in this documentation, I should see all of the uh, usages or examples. Let's, let's try here. Um, let's go to examples. While you're looking that up, Daniel, yeah. uh, in, in in dynamics, multi-body dynamics, when we add a constraint, we add something that's called a uh, a variable called lambda for every constraint, and it's called ah. a Lagrange multiplier, and that's how we handle the math and to deriving the dynamics. These basically, it's the it's the force that holds that 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 makes this constraint happen. Obviously, that's not relevant in any way to you fixing your problem, but it's right. tying this back to how we do it in robotics. So there, there's probably a better example. I just sort of clicked through and found this example, and we can see this is actually a. I found an example of a ragdoll simulation with Matter.js, and you can see like here is the chest to the upper left arm, like or you know maybe that's L, I don't know. I don't know what part is what on an actual anatomy here, but you can see we have two bodies, and then we have a stiffness. That should be all I need, I think. Um, there is a point A and a point B. I think that's just if you want the constraint to be attached to the offset from the center of the body, which I don't need for this. So let's see if that's all I need. Like, um, uh, where's my sketch again? Body A, body B, stiffness of one. Body A is not defined. Oh, wait, no, no, no. All right, I, you know what I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do here? is um, I'm just going to look at the thing that I was making yesterday <laughs> and see how see what the constraint code is there because I think you know I uh, you know we, we've been going for a very long time and so I'd like to kind of get this wrapped up here and I think this will uh, help us get there a little faster uh, constraint body oh length I'm missing constraint creates so let's just take this let's grab this code here that I wrote yesterday as I was trying this idea out uh, and so we're going to go to the cart, the bob, the rest length, which um, I set up here, and the stiffness. Why is it saying body A is not defined? So let's take a look at what am I missing here? Is cart, oh, is cart not made yet? No, cart is a body. Bob is a body. Hmm. I'm, I'm not. I, this is where the chat always comes in and helps me out. I disabled auto refresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, we're fine. The constraint is there. Okay. The constraint is there. I think I just uh, I hadn't run the I had hadn't fixed it and run the code at the, in the right order. Okay. The other thing I want to do is is render that constraint. That constraint, by the way, by default doesn't have any mass. It's not. There's no geometry associated with it. It's just a force. Um, but for our purposes, let's not worry about color here. Let's draw a white stroke that with a thickness of four pixels, and we'll just draw a line between the cart and the bob. Oh. 
uh, now. Okay. So what am I, what's wrong here? Stroke cart position X. What is undefined? Cannot read the property of undefined line 110. <laughs> Look at the chat again. Everyone's telling me I forgot to press play, but that's not the issue here. Uh, what is going on here? Cart position X, cart position Y. Bob position X. We just drew, drew a circle there. We just drew a rectangle there. Oh, there's a weird typo. You have a, dot, you, you, no yeah, you have a comma. It's a comma. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, and I've added this like very uh, thick stroke to everything now. So before I draw uh, these elements, let's put no stroke. Okay. And I put auto refresh back on. There we go. All right. Look at that. Now, of course, our pendulum is just falling over because my controller is not attempting to balance the pen the chat, by the way. So the chat is like 30 to 60 seconds behind us. <laughs> so you can see like comma, 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 comma. Okay, I got yeah, it. I got exactly. it. <laughs> um, let's add, um, let's take out the friction, but let's put a little bit of bounciness in there just because I think it'll be kind of nice to see it. Um, the, the pendulum bounce when it hits the ground. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That, that has a nice kind of feeling to it. Again, I need to really do some tuning to my <laughs> cart so it doesn't go flying off into the air, but so be it. All right. We're getting really close to the end of this, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. So yes. the next thing I out. need, yeah. Go ahead. No, tell, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. No, you, 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 you know, you're the, why don't you tell me? <laughs> okay. Good. So I need to only, the thing that I need to do is the calculate the error now as not the difference in X positions, but the difference between my ideal angle and what the current angle is. So my ideal angle, if, if my reference point is the y-axis would be zero. Now, how I get that angle might end up being, that might be 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. So let's see. The question is, is matter going to give me the angle or should I calculate the math for the angle myself? I think I'm just going to do it myself in a very ridiculous way. <laughs> uh, unless, let's just check the matter vector. Um, let's check the matter vector um, object because maybe it has like a heading function in it. Uh, like an angle. Vector angle, yes. Oh, that gives me the angle between two vectors, which I could certainly use, but that's not what I want. I want the angle of just the heading of a vector. I know how to do this myself. I was just wondering if matter would give it to me. Um, so uh, maybe somebody in the chat will tell me, um, but I'm going to just do this in a very crude, raw way myself. So let's, let's add a comment here. What is the pendulum arm angle? So I'm going to make my own uh, P5 vector. So here's a really terrible idea that we will correct later. But I'm mixing, I'm not mixing metaphors, I'm mixing physics libraries um, in that um, matter has this vector object called vector.create, but I know the P5 vector object like in and out, like it's burned into my brain so I can get an angle from it really quickly. I could also use the A arctangent function. So many ways I could get this, but let's just do it this way. So I want to create a vector, which is um, the, uh, uh, I'm just going to create an empty vector. And then I'm going to say V.X is the uh, Bob's position minus the cart's position. And I, I could go over to my whiteboard here to diagram this, but I, uh, let's, let's, uh, and did I use, oh, I used V already. Um, um, let's just call this arm. It's a vector to describe the arm. Um, and then Bob position dot Y minus Bob uh, position, a uh, cart position dot Y. And then uh, I'm going to set the angle to be the arm's heading. So again, I could do this mathematical calculation myself, but basically I drew a vector pointing from the cart all the way up to the bob, and then I'm getting its angle. Now let's look at what that angle is. And I'm gonna convert it to degrees just because my ability to like understand what an angle is in radians is, so we can see it's about, uh, well, it's when it's, 
It's at negative 180 degrees when it's there, which is correct. So what did it start at? I guess, well, let's turn the engine off. <laughs> so you can see, what is, its, what is its correct angle? Its correct angle is uh, 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 one, um, neg pi divided by two. Right in radians. In radians. Uh, in, 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 in radi in pi over two in radians. Are you, are you converting yeah. it to degrees or not? Because pi over two yep. is going to be like one point seven. Yeah, that's uh, I converted it and then I converted it back in my head. Okay. What? Do I have something wrong here? Uh, let's see. Um, hold on. One of the ways I like to one of the ways we can debug this is I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to very quickly translate to a little spot and draw a line uh, I'm just drawing this line here and I'm going to rotate by that angle weird okay so I definitely have a mistake oh there's a Y there <laughs> I make so many typos there we go I knew like my math is not right okay there we go we're good we're good <laughs> I'm sure the chat, like the chat's already got this. <laughs> okay, this is actually nice though to see this because if I turn the um, if I turn the engine back on, uh, where's that? It's kind of fun to see like that little extra dial like kind of rotate with it. It's like, but I don't know that we really need that debugging because we have the actual pendulum arm. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be useful. So I'm going to just uh, comment that out though for right now. Okay, so, so, so now, one thing I want, I want to alert yeah. you to is the fact that we're going to have to get the derivative of that angle that you're measuring numerically. Right. So uh, I don't know what you have a plan for that, but we could certainly come up with one. If, I'm I, sure you can. I don't have a plan for that. So you can start thinking about that. Um, yeah. uh, yes, I guess I could. I don't have an, you know, the objects have angular velocity, but that's it rotating. I will have to track that angular velocity myself. I guess by looking at right. the change, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I was just wondering. Can you store something for, or yes. grab something from the previous loop, a temp variable exactly. that you can derive? Yes, to find that's a that's what I'll do. Derivative. That's what I'll do. Okay. So Great. first, let's. So one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just comment out the d gain. So this is now. It's just got a p gain. Uh, uh, it's only this is just a p controller, and again, it's still trying to do the cart location, not the angle of the um, of the pendulum. Okay. So, but the error now should be, where did I calculate that? Okay, so this isn't, let's, let's move this up to here. Let's take, actually just take this out so that we can see things more in one place. And now what I want to do is change this error calculation. So this is, I'm gonna just leave that there for reference. This is now the desired angle, which I said was, what did I say it was pi divided by two? <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, pi, pi, yeah, pi divided by two should be the, uh, <laughs> assuming zero is horizontal right. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and no, left it's actually not. Right. It's ne So the unfortunate thing is, uh, oh, uh, it's negative pi divided by two because the y axis in my world is flipped. So okay rotating down along the horizontal axis is 90 degrees. So, you know, there, there could be some reasons for, in a different kind of demonstration of this, to actually make the world with the y-axis pointing up to reduce these kinds of uh, problems. But like, you know, in, in, in my world of like just getting this to work, like, oh no, I just remember we need a negative here. Okay, this is cool. All right, so it's perfectly balanced because there's no offset. So just to see if what the P controller does, Remember these forces I had here? Let's actually, I'm going to be able to, with a key press, apply a little bit of wind. Almost as if a gust of wind comes, or somebody flicks the bob. Because it's not a wind, because the wind would push the cart conceivably as well. So presumably now, when I press the key press to the right, a little force is going to act on the bob, pushing it to the right. And that should cause every the P controller to start to move the cart. <laughs> All right, maybe we should uh, a little uh, less wind, a little little less a wind, little I less wind, and good. maybe a little less yeah. restitution, a little yeah. more conversation. What's the song that I'm somehow referencing now? Uh, I, I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, now it went in the wrong. 
it, oh, it compensated, but in the wrong direction. So I yeah, must have I something wonder, flipped. Well, it's possible, like, I, I, the, I mean, I know you had to have to change the direction of pi over two yeah. as your desired angle, but theoretically that should be okay. It shouldn't require, maybe it's the fact that it drives it in a different direction. Um, you could try flipping the gain, even though it technically should be positive, but we can give that a shot. There you go. So there you why go. is my it direction we, wrong? Interesting. Um, it, I mean, it has to follow how you're defining your angle. Maybe so you let's, your angle. let's consider zero being the y axis, in which case, um, oops. Oh, wait, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's not, uh, let's turn the engine off for a second. So, right, so this angle is now zero because I'm offsetting it by pi yeah. divided by two. I, and one thing I also point, point out is people are saying we didn't, that the D term might still be on and still working based upon the cart position. So uh, it would be a mismatch. I That's something I, that could be mismatched. In, it is. I, I commented yeah. that out. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty yeah, sure no. Got yeah. Um, you did. So, and then this would be the desired angle is zero minus the current angle. But if the current angle is, yeah, let's see. So now let's, do I, did I turn the engine back on? No. We don't have to get stuck on this. We can sort of think it through more later. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So uh, there's something, this is, once I've now, um, oh no, I still have the negative. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I had the negative there. All right, so I'm not going to worry about this right now. Um, let's we'll we'll put our heads together. I'm sure it will appear to somebody's um, somebody line 7175. 71. Am I? Uh, oh, cart position. That's not a big deal, but that is a problem. So if I. And look at this. <laughs> We've got, you know, one thing I can do here that I've done before is I've, you can, we can make the ground much, much higher. So basically uh, the ground, so that it can't skip past it as easily. It's thicker. Um, thicker, yeah. yes. Um, so the ground could be like a hundred pixels thick. Um, and then uh, obviously now it's, uh, and the H is a hundred. So it's obviously it's there, but oh, actually, you know, that's kind of fine. I was gonna say like, oh, I wanna have to shift it down, but let's just, that's actually much sort of nicer to see it there anyway. So let's, now I just need to adjust. It would be nice to adjust where the cart starts, which is um, uh, like around 200. Uh, for, I've sort of forgotten. I'm just gonna like, there we go. Perfect. Okay. I, I don't remember what it was. So, okay. So great. So now. Cool. Um, and let's so make now this. I think we, we, now, we, yeah. I, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. But I was going to, I was going to mention that like we can, we can up the gain now and see if we can yes. get it to chase yes. faster and it yes. be good. Yes. Yes. Um, so where is, I just want to see where this console log is that is filling up the console. There it is. Okay. So let's now. Um, put the gain higher and hit a little force to the right. Yeah, you could see, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, one thing I could also do, I was doing this in when I was doing tests, is I could add little walls on the on the sides so that it's like forced to stay on the screen. It'll bounce back and have to readjust. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that just for, because I think it'll make the simulation kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to get too stuck in this, but let's do... Um, um, and I don't even have to draw those necessarily. We can just say like, hey, let's make a um, left left wall, uh, which is a rectangle at the width, uh, at the, I'm gonna just hard coat this in because it's a little bit more concise right now, at um, 200 pixels down, it's just like 10 pixels wide, it's the full height. So now, Ooh, okay, and let's make it uh, 100 pixels wide. Just so like this. Oh, I didn't add it. No, it's just I didn't add it to the. Um, 
world.add world left wall. And that's the right wall, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if I, this is, I, I was uh, uh, saying this to Christian earlier this week. I try never to stream for more than two and a half hours because that seems to be the threshold where my brain completely starts to shut down. It's like my classes at NYU are, all, are two and a half hours long with a good 15 minute break in the middle, which we did not take, which is, uh, uh, it's just, I guess we had a little bit of break because we were, we, were, we were passing things back and forth. But uh, um, okay, so let's see here. Oh, that's the giant. The wall, oh, the wall should be at 400, sorry. This is the problem with not drawing it. I don't know where it is. There we go. There you go. So, okay, and let's just add a left one. Maybe this is a, a different kind of problem I'm introducing, but at least we'll have this option. Okay, so now, and if we can make them very bouncy, so as to force the, the things to bounce off them more, okay. Oh, let's see, left wall, zero to nine, and got to add the left wall to the world. Okay. And I think I also might like to, I think it'll help us sort of see what's going on by having this force be even less. So let's, I'm gonna just, many magnitudes less, right? Because we can see now it, there we go. We can see it more trying to balance it. And I don't yeah. know why it decided to like this, this you know, this it killed physics your walls. engine. I don't is, know what happened. Yeah. But I love that. I love the way you're, you're yeah. uh, winding it back and forth. Yeah. I think so what, it, it gets stuck at the end. I might be, I wonder if the walls are actually in the wrong place because 290, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, the wall should be, I don't know what I was doing. This should be 150, the Y position. This is the problem of not drawing it. The wall is actually not, was like, I had it all the way at the bottom. I, I don't know what, why I did that, but this will, and we can up the gain, but yeah. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. So we're, we've got a nice P controller. I can like push it and it'll sort of try to like get it balanced. Look at that. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is beyond my, we should really stop here. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. Okay, um, so I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna put a hard stop at, on us at two o'clock. So that gives us 15 more minutes to maybe see about adding the D controller and maybe one or two short questions. We can always come back and do this again or be available on social media or Discord or in the YouTube comments if people, I mean, uh, Christian, you're, you're welcome to, we'll go back to your life, <laughs> but I will I will pass along any questions that I can't answer to Christian and, uh, and, and you, answer you know what? You. I, you're, you're working so hard. I'll stick around to, to 2, 2 p.m. You know, to, to moral support for your challenge okay. here. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. We're, we're not going any more than 15 minutes. Um, so let's start adding the D control here. So what we need is the angular velocity. And the easiest way to do that would be to just store the current angle and the previous angle, yes? Correct. So let me create a variable for previous angle. We're going to have the previous angle start, I don't need to put it in setup, um, and I'm mixing different code styles here. I will go back to what I usually use with the camel case for JavaScript. Previous angle is zero. So this is me, where am I calculating? This is actually gonna be uh, pretty fast. As soon as I calculate the new angle, the uh, angle velocity is the current angle minus the previous angle. Yep. Um, and we got divided by the delta t, right? The DT right. So did. in my case, delta t is a uh, one, <laughs> but we we might need to match it because I'm just using the frame rate. Basically, every frame is one. Step. There might be an issue with that in terms of uh, how we scale things. In which case, we can and, and how matter.js is working. But let's start with that. But yes, we should. I guess to be more to be correct, I should have a variable for dt and take this and multiply it by dt. Is that correct? Divide it by dt. Divide by dt, yes, sorry. That's what I meant. Um, okay, um, so we're gonna leave it like that. That way, that, that is a parameter we could adjust if need be. And then I just need to 
as soon as I do that, previous angle is the current angle so that I pick that up for the next time. So this should give us the angular velocity. And then I guess I don't really, uh, just to be consistent, I'm, I'm having many extra unnecessary variables here, but I will just put this as the angular velocity. Oh, and I, there's no, it's a, it's a scalar value, so there's no x component I'm dealing with. And so I have no idea. I, I think I put everything in the code. <laughs> okay. Fingers crossed here. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell how much of a factor that's having, but let me ramp that up. Oh, so we might want to, it's possible we might want to, uh, you know, keep in mind we had to change the direction of the other game. Right. Uh, we could probably be, so we might want to change the direction of the other, uh, of this other one, which is not a theoretical problem. It would be like, uh, what if you're forced you to find as operating oh, yeah. in the opposite direction, for instance. So it's not, that's not a crazy thing. So let's, so look at that. It's coming to a stop. Look at that. And then it sways slowly to a stop. How about yeah. that? Wow. Well, now it's gone. Oh, oh you're doing that. You're, no, you're I, I started I, pressing keys. Yeah. I was like, what, okay, I was, what happened? The math said it shouldn't do that. No, no that's <laughs> yeah. good. That's cool. why we better have like a buttons or some interface or like the four. Uh, I could use like um, something that we use a lot on the channel is something called Perlin noise, which is this sort of smooth noise, which would be nice for like just this kind of like arbitrary wind that's kind of like rant like sort of chaotic introduce a little chaotic wind into the system that's not just totally random but sort of smoothly changes over time and have it always balanced according to that uh kd can always absorb dt term okay so i'm going to make a list of things that i um this 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 we're going to uh we're gonna we're wrapping this up <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say 10 minutes early but not really i just want to make a short list of things that i want to address um, so I remember them, and then what? I, you know, it's not going to happen immediately because I got to go back to the and, uh, Christian. I'm sure you do as well. Go back to regular life for a little bit of today, but sometime later this weekend, or certainly on Monday, I'm going to um, um, add the code to GitHub. Um, let's investigate the direction of the of the gain constants. Like I have some error there maybe related to the axis being flipped or something yeah. that i just cannot i cannot find right now in my head so we'll I'm, investigate I'm almost that. certain i'm almost certain that's what it is i mean yeah that's, what... that's not a, i know i talked i know i talked about how the gain should be positive but that's <laughs> it could be dependent upon yeah. which you direction you uh, yeah. put your uh, at your force so, um yeah. and then i don't know does anybody else quickly in the chat is there, I, I, there's actually not i mean and then i'm just going to do some like cleanup and commenting of the code yeah. okay but like, um, we're not going to keep going with this, but I would just out of curiosity, if this were, a, let's say this were a demonstration for a lecture you're giving in one of your robotics classes, like what would be, I, I mean, I guess the I, adding the I could be something next, but what would be, what would be sort of like the follow up to this? Well, I, I think what you would do, so in a robotics lecture, like we would learn what the margins of stability are. Like there's like, you, there, we have these methods of knowing not just what makes the controller perform better or worse, but there are thresholds for what's stable and not stable. And you can technically test those out. Now that's not a super necessary thing for, for what we're doing here. We're kind of tuning it up. The I term would be interesting to show the tricky part would be getting it to not only balance, but also hover back to the right position. Right. Ah, so, yeah. And someone in the chat, yeah. someone in the chat just said that would like to see the desired position of the Bob, not angle. Oh, so people are arguing, like uh, ha adding various comments to the chat, yes. but that's interesting. So not only does the robot need to balance the uh, pendulum, but or the, or the pole, if you will, but it also want, needs to balance it in the sort of center of the space that it inhabits. Exactly, um, exactly. And th there are ways to do that. It's a little trickier, but you can still do it with the PID control framework. Great. So. Um, one, so one more, more I'm going to take uh, one or two more questions from the chat before we wrap up. One is, uh, what is your favorite control algorithm? And the, the options, you, you can go off this list of options, but the ones listed in the chat are LQG, MPC, sliding mode, et cetera. Do you have a favorite? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so um, just, I, I'll, I'll z zoom in on this one that's called MPC, or which stands for Model Predictive oh, yeah. Control. 
I mean, they all have their, the short answer. They all have their uses in different things. Um, the thing that's interesting about model predictive control is that it is not just taking the current state of the system, like what we're doing with PID and saying, do this based upon the current state of the system. I'm far away, push hard. Uh, the, the MPC is what it's doing. It's, it is predicting into the future what it should do. It is rapidly uh, figuring out not only what to do now, but right. a little bit after that, a little bit after that, a little bit after that, a little bit after that. It's doing what we call a trajectory optimization on the fly. It is, and, um, and one of the sort of undersold to the public tools that we do, that, that we can do in robotics now is we can run really fast optimizations called quadratic programs. Mm. And they will generate on the fly the best trajectory it can, not only for now, but into the future. And so you can do really cool stuff with, with MPC because it is just rapidly changing its prediction. You can, you can, you can, you can push it around. It's like, oh, I should do this now. I should do that now. Right. And we use that in our robots now a lot. Wonderful. Um, there's a great, um, oh, now I lost the comment. There was a really nice comment in the chat that said, if we added friction, um, that would be that would be a nice way to demonstrate the need for the eye. Because yep. we would have to push harder, I guess, in a way, like accumulate that error uh, to know, to, to get it to um, to balance properly. Yeah, and, um, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll make a quick comment on the I term. In that's, yes, that's a great thing I, 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 uh, for, for friction. The I term is also the easiest way to make your system accidentally unstable. You got to ah. be careful with the I term. Uh, it could take something that was stable and then suddenly you crank it up too high and it starts, it, like, it'll, it, like, it will go from like, oh, I'll correct this little bit of say state error to it'll overshoot. And then it'll overshoot again, then overshoot again, and it goes wild. So that's right. what it'll do. Um, wonderful. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let me just check that. So well, I'm trying to think of what, what, what else I want to say to wrap up here. So first of all, thank you so much for joining. This is really uh, fantastic. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, that yeah. was one thing I wanted to add. So. Um, so one of the things that I'm hoping that I've been working on for a while, and the, one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this is I've been working on a new chapter for the Nature of Code book about um, neural networks. And I've done mm -hmm. demonstrations of this where we use uh, a technique called neuroevolution to evolve the weights of a neural network to control an agent in a simulation. And this, I think, would be a really nice example of, but you know, of comparing and contrasting that that kind of like what would the inputs to the neural network be? Of you know, it's the it could just be just the angle, you know, the angle of the pendulum and the current velocity of the cart or something like that. Um, and sort of compare and contrast. But what I love about this is I often have students who are like. Oh my God, I need to learn uh, uh, reinforcement learning and cue learning and all this stuff to be able to control my thing because, uh, and then, but no, there's something as simple. And again, you know, everything is relative. There's lots of complexity sure. here and calculus math, but something as simple as just looking at your agents, your objects position in the world where it wants to be that error and applying a force scaled according to that error. Um, it, and that's just that proportional controller is a really nice way to add intelligence into a simulated system. And obviously with uh, a physical robot that you built with an Arduino, like sticking a neural network in there could be like quite overkill, <laughs> although interesting as well. So I just think it's really exciting to see this as a complement and counterpoint to some of these other systems that I'm working on. And I think there's lots of potential here to uh, continue and look at more uh, controllers and hopefully we can, we can stay in touch uh, to work on this some more. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just throw a little point on the end of that. I was talking to you in the chat. I was mentioning that people were bringing up neural network controllers. And um, and it is a great compliment because even some of the really coolest robots you see that are, that are using reinforcement learning, right. there's a beautiful example of, of taking the Cassie robot, the biped, and people use reinforcement learning to train a good walking a good walking controller. It's amazing. What they're doing, the neural network, is it, it, what it's producing are the desired values for a PD controller. That's what it's doing. They work together, and that's really effective. Great. All right. Um, so, is there? So, I'm just going to go. Thank you. I'm just going to go over here just to show quickly. I've zoomed in here. This is currently what's in the video description. You can find Christian's Twitter, Instagram, uh, Twitch, and YouTube channels. 
uh, here. Um, so please go and follow Christian. Uh, you know, we are both on Twitter. I plan on definitely sharing some of the results here. So maybe we can get a thread going with some additional links to explanations or uh, examples. And if you've made something, there's no page on the Coding Train website currently for this live stream. I might have one in the future and there's a way that you can submit things. But so, but stay tuned because I will be releasing a GitHub repository um, and updating this video's description with uh, links to all these uh, materials in case you want to make your own. And I always say this, but like very little in life, there's lots of things that make me happy. But one of the things that makes me happiest in life is when somebody sees something in a video and makes their own version of it. However, whether even if you just made it and you changed the colors and you added a little like design of a cart, like think just the, whatever kind of creative fun you can have with this, don't worry about accuracy of the physics of the simulation, just have fun with it, play with it and share that back. I would love to see what you do. Is there, is there anything else you want to say or plug or point people towards before we... Uh, oh, I know. I, I, I know I'm like giving a rabbit. One thing I did want to ask is because I do know that I do have um, a lot of students who watch uh, the coding train, whether they're in high school or an undergraduate. Um, so if people are interested in kind of like the field of robotics or mechanical engineering, can, um, where, where would they look? What's, uh, what, what would you uh, point them towards in terms of your lab and your program that you teach at would be one nice thing to so, so, mention uh, so, before we wrap up. So, uh, no, it's great. So I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering in Tallahassee. So it's a joint college between Florida A&M University, which is a, historic, a historically black college and university, and Florida State University, which is a wonderful R1 research institution. So I'm down here in Tallahassee. You take engineering courses, you might take them from me. Um, you can find me on my personal website at christianhubicki.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, Hubicki, H-U-B-I-C-K-I. Um, and you can find me there. I've actually, I oh, give God. public lectures as well. I sometimes people uh, pull me up and this is my laboratory, the optimal robotics lab.com. And so that's where you can find some of my work. And this is one of our robots walking around and, and, uh, and feel free to reach out to me. You can find my contact information on my website. And of course, through Twitter, where, which is uh, at Chubicki, which I believe is Chewbacca's <laughs> younger brother. <laughs> awesome. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for being here. This was great. I'm so glad the tech seemed to all work. Uh, thank it you, did. everybody, for watching. I don't have any particular uh, updates about when the next live stream will be or when the next videos are coming out, but hopefully something next week. You can, um, everything, I always announce everything on the Coding Train Discord. So you can go to thecodingtrain.com slash Discord, join the Discord channel. If you sign up for the notifications role, you'll get pings if you want for when I'm scheduling things. And I just appreciate all of you watching. Please uh, go and enjoy making your own, you know, do something else maybe, take a break from your computer. It's been like many hours, <laughs> but when you come back to it, uh, make, make if you make a PID controller in Python or in P5 or Unity, again, share it with us on Twitter. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the coding train. All right, I'm going to go to the end screen and a little uh, music here. Um, and my mic is now going to mute. Goodbye, everybody.
Sorry, everybody, the music is not on. I don't know why. Oh, well, sorry, everybody, there won't be any music in the outro today, but uh, I'm going to shut this down soon anyway.